recording. But Thank you. Welcome everybody to the September meeting of the Manhattan Community Board One Transportation and Street Activity Permit Committee. Thank you. That's a long meeting. Yes, it is. Anyway, I have up the agenda. Do they have four items tonight? I only have paper versions of that. I'll take it. So I'll put it on my slides. slides. On your slides? Oh, I don't have your slides. Yeah, you do. Sorry, first day vacation. You don't do it again? Yeah. Not good. Michelle? Yeah, was that I Five. Got that too. And that's it. Okay. And Almost done over. Not over? Hit my bicycle. Yeah. Hit the intersection. Right here. Right across the street. Wow. The street. I had the right of way. Wow. That's not good. I know. Five. Full gen. Yes. Five PR. Yeah. Got those. Would not have been better. Uh, I'm waiting to get across. There was a lady walking her dog across the street. She let the dog off the leash because otherwise she would have gotten nailed on my sports. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I'm glad we have it all. If we have four items, then we'll get started with the first one. And we'll get out of the season for it. And that is. <laughs> Guys, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, great. All right. Thank you. Um, so my name is Patrick Kennedy. I'm with the Department of Transportation, and uh, this is our proposal for uh, an enhancement or an improvement on the uh, existing two-way protected bike lane entrance of the Brooklyn Bridge. So the reason we're here today is that in the past three years, since we installed the, the new uh, in-roadway protected lane on the ridge, uh, there has been a significant increase in bike volume on the bridge. I, we actually, I was working from home this morning, so today, so I, I was reverse commuting on my way in, and it was basically just an unbroken line of bikes going headed out of Manhattan uh, this evening. But we've had a significant amount of growth on that bridge. Uh, there, there are far more bicycles on there than there were three years ago. And uh, I mean, these are protected bike lanes are still our most effective safety treatment. When everyone's behaving themselves, they are uh, they are better for for everyone, better for pedestrians, better for motor vehicles, and better for cyclists. Try to point this at something. Um, uh, just here it should be fine. Okay. Oh, maybe I clicked it. Yeah. Okay, try again. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so uh, we've made some recent efforts uh, at uh, installing protected bike lanes in uh, this part of the city. We did Broadway a few years ago, that's southbound. A little bit south of here, we did a pair of uh, protected lanes on the center of Lafayette that connect up to other streets in the protected bicycle network further north. Uh, so that greatly improved uh, bicycle access to the to the north from, from the bridge. Sorry. So just uh, to, to show you this, I'm sure you're very, very familiar with this. It's right outside, but we made a lot of improvements to uh, the, the lanes going, going uh, to, to and from points north. So we've got a protected land in the middle of the roadway that is protected by trees and barriers on both sides, continues on until it splits where Lafayette and center split. So that is bicycle access to and from points north now. However, however, from to and from points south, uh, things are a little different. So to get to to and from points south, or to get to Park Row in this case, uh, cyclists have to make a essentially a hairpin turn to get into the promenade, mix with pedestrians, and then exit the promenade at the location where they would previously do so before this roadway path was 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 built. So at that particular turn, we're asking cyclists to both negotiate a hairpin turn, look for through the uh, other through cyclists, uh, and then uh, also deal with people crossing pedestrians because uh, you, you have people who are either waiting or queuing at the on the promenade side. Uh, and as we all, all learned, not everyone does what they're exactly supposed yeah. to do with this, with this spot. So it's just we're, we're introducing a lot of, of, of possibility for a lot of bad interactions right here at this one location. And we have very high pedestrian volume at that uh, that crosswalk, people coming to and from from transit, people going to the bridge, people just trying to get further north or further south on that side of the street. So there's a lot of people crossing crossing there. It's a very busy place. So it's not a great place to have bikes having to like cut in or cut out. Mm -hmm. All the time, it's 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 not ideal. So our proposal for this is to add a new protected lane in what's the what was there was currently the second turn lane for uh, southbound Center Street. What this will do is we can't get rid of that that 180 degree turn, but we can simplify it and remove that that mixing with pedestrians that currently happens. So that turn it, it would have a bigger radius, but it would be a simpler movement because you're only having to look for uh, for, for like other cyclists instead of having to to, to figure out like yeah, are people standing there? Are uh, is there someone right behind me on this turn? Is there someone coming up on me? Like, do, do, do we simplify that interaction by moving it into the roadway. So it would be in the roadway uh, next to the promenade. Uh, so it would be a very similar movement for, for anyone who's headed uh, to and from points south. It would just be no longer mixing on the promenade with pedestrians. So just another uh, view of that. What is we have currently existing, there is two uh, travel lanes 
and then we'd be removing uh, one of those trap lanes, installing that protected bike lane against the, the curb. It would be barrier separated from uh, moving vehicles. And then we'd be relocating the existing press parking uh, that's, that's currently there and is making that all no standing. So in terms of making this work, how, how are we able to remove a turn lane and still have people get onto the bridge? Uh, there are approximately 700 vehicles in the peak time that, uh, in a, in a, you know, per hour that are, that are using this, uh, this roadway to get to the bridge or, or to using this roadway. About six out of seven are turning left. About 600 are turning left, 100 vehicles are going through. That's the, the maximum volume. Um, the proposed lane reduction doesn't really affect the amount of, like, the, the delay, which is really the way motorists feel a, a, uh, a reduction in, in lane capacity. Uh, very significantly, and the next slide I can explain why. So this is a slide showing uh, before and after the work we did in 2021 to make that uh, in on roadway to path for the Brooklyn Bridge. And as you can see, there were two lanes turning on from Chambers onto Center to get to uh, that bridge entrance, and then there were two lanes coming from Lafayette uh, down to the two lanes on Center Street. And then in 2021, we narrowed that to one lane turning from Chambers, one lane feeding from, from Lafayette. And center is, is one lane and expands to two. So there, the reason we're, we're confident that we're not going to have a huge amount of delay issues with this is because we've already created that delay. It was something that happened back in 2021. We reduced to that, that particular block, uh, both from Chambers and from Lafayette. Uh, the signals are timed. There's a barn stands outside, meaning that there's a per percentage of time that the only pedestrians who were, were able to cross. Uh, so the the vehicles that like the amount of time, the green time for vehicles at the Chamber Street intersection is almost the exact same as the amount of green time for vehicles to get onto the bridge or head further south. So those signals are coordinated. Oops, and uh, the, so we're not really changing that signal timing. We're just changing. That one turn lane, which, as I as I'm, I'm showing now, uh, isn't really needed anymore because we've already narrowed, uh, reduced the amount of vehicle capacity that can actually get there. So, in terms of relocating that press parking, uh, it's currently on uh, center there. We're just really just talking about swapping it, sort of, with the existing uh, no standing regulation where that former second turn lane was. That is on uh, on Chamber Street, so we're, we'd be relocating press parking to Chamber Street. We'd also be uh, expanding. There's sort of a, a, a hashed area, a channelized area that's right uh, next to the intersection. We'd be expanding that about a car length back to just provide more space for uh, for pickups and drop offs uh, at, at at the corner there. Uh, that was something that we uh, were made aware was was it's it's a it's a contentious issue to, to try to get access to the curb at this particular location. A lot of people need it, dumping all sorts of vehicles. And we just want to make sure that we have as much space as we can that's supported out for people just to be able to get in, get out, make a quick, uh, quick drop off if necessary. So uh, just to show a, a different uh, different view of this, this is uh, sort of like south is now up, but it's looking down, down from, from the sky. Uh, plan view. We uh, we'd be using a combination of markings. Can, I, can we? Are we able to move the, uh, the the picture at the top right over somewhere? Yeah. On the screen. I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of using everything. Maybe bottom left. Or is to is to minimize it entirely. Oh yeah, not that. Oh yeah, you see what's going on. So we'd be using a combination of, of markings sort of uh, to show that right turn as well as that sideways bike symbol to, to indicate that they're supposed to be queued up for the, for a turn there. Uh, that's uh, that's showing basically where uh, bikes are queuing up now. Only they're not, now they're on the promenade, in this case they'd be in the roadway, to wait to cross uh, center to head further south on, on Park Row. We'd be using a combination of markings. Uh, Got red jersey barriers. Is there a mouse that I can use? Just, uh, or is pointer. Just pointer? a pointer? Pointer on the end. Pointer. Yeah. All right. Awesome. There's that. There you go. See it. 
<laughs> oh, is that that's a little that's that old arrow? That's me. Wow. Wow. Technology. So we got these red Jersey barriers here going up and down. It's a little people are getting used to. Uh, so we'd have those separating uh, bikes from from the moving vehicles. Uh, at the top here is a little higher up. There's uh, between the crosswalk and the sideways bike symbol. You got a little red line there. That would be uh, quick curb, which like plastic barriers. Uh, this, that's that's really just to show cyclists are not supposed to continue through. Okay. We just want to double check and you know, make sure that they're they're not they're not continuing through. We'd also have uh, oops, that was the wrong button. The wrong button. Yeah, my back. What I do here? What I do? Yeah, it's no longer working. Uh, there we go. It would take it would take a sweet time. It's all right. Uh, we've got that over here on the other side, sort of right there. We've got more quick curve. That's to protect cyclists on the far side. You're queuing to get up into this when they're coming from Park Row because now we've uh, we've gotten rid of any kind of authorized parking use there. So there's not supposed to be any vehicles there. So this would be a spot where we're just making sure that there's if they're uh, th just making sure that there's a, a vertical element to show that there's uh, keep anyone who's cheating into that from the turn lane. And then we'd also be it's not shown here in the, in the drawing, but we'd be using uh, signage to indicate that you're supposed to switch from one side of the roadway to the other. We have guide signs uh, for other protected bike lanes throughout the city where they switch sides of the roadway. So we'd be using signs like that there. Uh, we'd also be trying to organize and improve the pedestrian experience here by clarifying these markings, uh, make, making sure that, that, that the, uh, all the crosswalks are more clearly indicated. We've got in the intersection up there, we've got sort of the green bars that are a different width and a different color than the, uh, than the crosswalk there to show that there's here's the crosswalk here. We'll be refreshing that. Um, and then looking what we what we can do on some of these ramps here to uh, improve the pedestrian experience on on both sides of this uh, to um, to improve the pedestrian uh, crossings there. Um, so in summary, looking at uh, is creating a protected bike uh, link connection linking the Brooklyn Bridge to Park Row, uh, removing cyclist pedestrian mixing in uh, the promenade here. This is a uh, Taken a couple of you know, a year or two ago when there weren't as many people there, but just add about, I don't know, a couple of hundred more people. And that's really what it looks like typically now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this would something this is something that would not be affecting vehicle travel time uh, on this particular block to get to, uh, to to get to the bridge or to get from your cell. So that is our proposal. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I think that's a good experience for pedestrians and cyclists as well as safety. And while, that, while not costing vehicle users time, I think it's very important to add to that contribution. So let's hear from committee members about what their concerns and questions are. And I know Justine's hand was up first, but then Cody, I know Tammy, you like to go at the end. Otherwise, you're happy. I actually have two things based on this, but either way, I'm happy. So to go. Justine, and then you ask those immediate questions, and I'll come back to you again as well. Mm -hmm. So if we can go back one slide to number 19. So number 19? Yeah, that okay. one. No, it is. Sorry. That's it's just 19. Yep. Okay. Um, on there. So I love the fact of the um trying to separate the pedestrians and the bikes. Mm -hmm. Um are the pedestrians sharing the crosswalks with the bikes? Mm -hmm. I mean what's what is there currently? That's what we do I mean, now. I can I can I can tell you what's designed and I can tell you what, what so occurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh we've got what's designed up here. That's the crosswalk right there, and then below it is the bike crossing. And they have on the promenade side, they have two separate ramps. Yeah. There is a, a signal pole right in between them. What typically happens is uh during during the mornings, uh or like off, like when, when there's not a lot of people there, like that's pretty well organized. There's, you know, typically bikes are over here, pedestrians are over there. It's, there's enough room when it's like afternoons or weekends, it kind of swells because 
This is really the only access point that pedestrians have on this side to get over to the city hall park. What happened? There we go. And so there's there's going to be a lot more pedestrians here. They typically use both sides. And uh, it's it's like the evening time when I'm typically there coming coming from uh, further further south, trying to get onto the bridge. Uh, it's it's difficult. You kind of just have to let everyone walk, and then when they're, when there's the remaining signal time, when they've all finished walking, you're able to get up into the uh, the promenade, sort of thread your way through very slowly, then make the hairpin turn. There's usually a line of cyclists to try to get around. Uh, there, that like that's 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 what I do. That's not what everyone does. It's it's a rather contentious location, mm -hmm. um, and I mean I it's over here. You can kind of see that. Like the barriers and a few feet before that that uh, crossing or that that ramp there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where's the? There it is, it's over there. Yeah, the barriers and a few feet before that that ramp. Uh, we need to have some little reflective sticks there just so that people can walkers can see the barrier ends even in in the dark. But my guess what will be happening is if you're trying to get in and out of there, you can kind of cut that corner pretty close because there's probably still going to be pedestrians walking in that area. Oh, but it's funny how you're trying claiming to claiming there. You keep saying like pedestrians are in the way. Well, we're all in the way of everybody. Yeah, like, yeah, we're yeah. All in each other's way there. Perspective is yeah. We're all in each other's way. I mean, like, what, I'm in, I'm in the one spot. If, if I'm on a bike there, I'm in the one spot I'm supposed to be. And there are people walking in the spot where I'm supposed to be. I'm trying to be conscientious. Not yeah. everyone is, yeah. and uh, that's that's the fact that 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 space right there. And then just one more question about the timing on Chamber Street. Mm -hmm. It's only like going to be a second warp time. What is the? Have you done a study to see what the pat traffic backup is down Chamber Street going to the Hudson River? Um, it's uh, this, this particular uh, project. Know. We're not looking at that, and that's Would you? just it's, I mean, it's something we can look at. But it, it's that that the the backups that are that are happening on chambers would not this would not affect that commission in any way because we are it's only one lane. I understand that, got, but they've got no. Go ahead. I'll, I'm going to pass it to let someone else explain why did it does you walk down it. Chamber Street today to get here. I did not come from Chamber Street. I'm, I'm aware it's, so, it's very no, congested. Mm -hmm. Today on Chamber Street, there is only one lane mm -hmm. going eastbound. Okay. Yeah. So where you're, where it is usually a two lane to be able to go, mm -hmm. it is now only one lane because Sapo has the entire street blocked off. Okay. Which is the same real world situation as will be when you move yeah. the parking there. The cars are backed up from Center Street all the way to church mm -hmm. and, and, and further because there's now one lane. Mm -hmm. So I am all for trying to figure something out, but that is a concern that is a real life example, unfortunately for you today, where yesterday when we were like briefly chatting about this, I was like, oh, psych, this is gonna be so much better. Now I'm looking, the entire lane was blocked off and, that's... and I have a picture of it. I showed Kate for SAPO for, uh, 4152 Chambers, who's having an event. So the entire street on both sides of Chambers is blocked. So, which is what was so And for that whole side of the street that is blocked off and that you're proposing for press parking mm -hmm. is exactly what, what the situation real world is now. And it's all the way backed up past church. And part of that is the only two viable east-west connections and the main thoroughfare to the Brooklyn Bridge is the West Side Highway and from is all directed across chambers. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right. There is no other way that you look at truck routes. Everything is based on that. So I have a concern with that that I that I think you need to consider. Mm -hmm. And secondarily, well, I appreciate the extra space that you're talking about pedestrians on chambers to push that press parking back. However, you would then have to be able to say and file with SAPO, this will never be able to be utilized for event parking because then the placards are just going to go someplace else. Mm -hmm. And instead of putting press parking there and moving them, we have a city lot directly across the street from Tweet that's used by DCAS. Why can't we put placards in there instead, some press parking in there? Why do they have to be on the street? It can work a little bit. I mean, we'll put it on Elk Street. That's oh, the yeah. it, this put, is it on, put press parking on Elk Street. Yeah, there's Which the is... Elk Street lot that I'm talking about, okay. or Elk Street. We would really like them 
off chambers, yeah. okay. which could then potentially also relieve some of the issues coming down because we want to improve pedestrians. If that is not able to be happening, I still would like the hatching to go all the way back past the side entrance to Tweed where the school bus drops off. One car length will not be enough. So, so where you see right there where that no standing on chambers is? Yeah. Okay, the children get thrown is exactly where the buses pull over for the kids to be dropped off for going to the schools that are there. Mm -hmm. Having had kids who incubated in that school, that is you're talking about the youngest of children being dropped off. If you're telling me they drop off west of there now, they don't use the southern entrance or exit, that would be information that I'd like to see confirmed. Okay, so what, what you're you're telling me is you would like to see this the the this here remain no standing and the press park that's down here relocated entirely not Correct. on this corner at all. Correct. Okay. Because yep. then if there's two lanes of traffic on chambers. It delays the amount of backup that you're going to have. It just gives a little bit more freedom of space. Well, there's only one, there's only one lane, 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 lane. I know on, on the other side. Like, the, but the only one, you only have one, one lane vehicles can actually make that turn. I get that. And I understand that. But you also have bicyclists who come down there, and you have other things. So if you're adding confirmed parking there, it's not actually going to help. It's going to just make it a little bit more dense. I'd rather have any placard of any kind. Not on change. Because yeah. if you put no standing, there will be five Okay. Mm -hmm. And somehow we need to get to SAPO that they may not utilize the southern side of Chamber Street in between Broadway and Center. Because mm -hmm. this is Center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean. Okay. Because in the traffic, it does go. Yeah, that's so I crazy, and and that was my thought as you were saying. I could imagine one at a time is fine, but wait. once we got all these things done, is there any possible way that any of the new traffic stuff that gets put in comes with a guaranteed two month, three month until patterns are set enforcement plan? Mm -hmm. yeah. Direction and enforcement. Is there any guarantee? Well, can it be guaranteed to the public? Yeah. In, we can we can ask for that. We can't guarantee that. We're not PD. Is that a budgetary thing that needs to be done? That we would say with traffic changes that affect both pedestrian, vehicular, and bicycles, the pedestrian managers are added to the budget for an, for a inauguration period or anything like that, paid for by the city because we period. I mean, what's I. I I can't report. I, can, I, can, I would just but. say um, DOT is not an enforcement agency. Uh, we rely and work with NYPD on enforcement when we install new projects and for other um, traffic changes and projects. We've worked with NYPD in the past, um, you know, requesting traffic enforcement agents at specific locations. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I we can't say definitively whether or not NYPD would be able to. Um, staff this location with officers at the time of implementation. We can certainly try for that um, and, and advocate for that with our with NYPD, but um, we wouldn't be able to guarantee that right now. It'd be something that I'd want to put in a resolution that we asked for that goes on record. And as long as we're talking budgets at the end of the year, that we take a look and say that anything really that has access change for multiple users have a rollout plan that includes enforcement and guidance and education mm -hmm. because you without it oh i didn't know yeah. we'll take it under yeah. consideration yeah thank you Cody, did you want to talk yes just what sammy said as far as like <laughs> the ed education part and enforcement part that would be really helpful yeah because it's the same with like Mopeds, you know, I think there's a learning curve from mopeds on the bike lanes on the, on the Brooklyn Bridge, and on that bridge as well. Also, uh, I applaud like what you're doing though. It's, it's just someone who rides over from Brooklyn who makes that hairpin turn. It's terrifying in the mornings because you do have to worry about cars behind you, as well as you know running into someone, or you know, and it's just it's you want to get off there quickly because you might have like a speeding cyclist behind you. But there's someone standing there, so it's just it's a really kind of perilous um, situation. But 
the the added lane to come onto the to the to the bridge itself uh, would be brilliant as well because in the afternoons and evenings it's just a, it's like you know dodging people it's not fun so yeah Karen I, I think Eric has oh yeah Thank you, Perry. Mm -hmm. um, instead of having it do a hairpin turn like right here, why not have it cross here? Put the bike lane on part part of the sidewalk. This is a very wide sidewalk. What? And then it comes back over here. Yeah, that sidewalk is so full of people. Because <laughs> yes. your every sidewalk your around here is full of people. Eric, <laughs> I will also tell you the park line. No, no, no. On on, on the sidewalk. We got we got vendors, we got city bike stations, yeah. we have well, uh, bike 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 activity. Okay. Yeah, let me finish. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. It can be relocated. I mean, it's not permanent. Also, um, the, the carts, the trucks, they can be moved too. It seems like they be like private property that they never leave. But the hairpin turn is is treacherous. I, I get it. But then also, if you're only gonna have one lane feed into the bridge. It'll be so easily obstructed by by NYPD or, or no. press events, and then also from a I'm, I'm thinking from a, a security a security risk. A lot of protests happen here. I mean, they, they'll be it'll be easier for them to block traffic now. Now they only need to block mm -hmm. in one lane, one obstruction. Now here it, it is pretty wide here. I, I, I disagree on it because. It, it is wide here, and then it could feed into this lane right here. So you would avoid the hairpin turn. And look how wide this area is over mm -hmm. here. Why must it be over here? Because you're talking about connecting it into the two way bike lane that goes along the side of City Hall. Which two way bike lane? There's here? a bike lane right there. Yeah. Yeah. So if it comes this way, instead of taking this out and leave it for flexibility, feed in over here. I wouldn't care if it was in the traffic lane on that side. It doesn't solve your problem of people necessarily trying to get to the bridge, but it does connect nicely around to the Park Row bike lane. Did you look at that? It's it's difficult to get to. You're coming up to the intersection here. If I can point. Coming up to the intersection here, and you need to stop here and wait. And there's really no safe time to actually go this distance right here because there's vehicles that are always turning in or they're coming from Lafayette. We would have to, and we don't really have any time in that intersection for the signals because there's a barn stance there. We would have mm -hmm. to do something about that. So it would it would be a reduction in everyone's experience using that that intersection to be able to make a bike lane work at that particular spot. So the goal for people traveling southbound on Lafayette, which then turns into center, is that if you're continuing south mm -hmm. or going to the Brooklyn Bridge, you go onto that street path, and then you take the left if you're gonna go on the Brooklyn Bridge at that one intersection or take a right to get to either through City Hall Park or attach to the Park Row bike lane. Um, you're talking about people riding a bike or people in the, on, on a bike coming south through the, through the Chamber Street intersection? Mm -hmm. you're, you're, I'm just, just trying to clarify. You're mm -hmm. asking how would people get to Park Row? Or, okay, so that in. I mean, They're going to ride in the new bike lane? They would be in the, yeah, let me just go back to the. Mm -hmm. So in, in that case, they would, they would stay in the middle of the. There's the yeah, they're going to stay right there on they, the right they, side. Yeah, they would stay in there. They would come up, make a slight turn right here, and then come up to this spot right here. And turn. And then wait for the turning vehicles to. And there's absolutely and no way to improve that intersection between pedestrians and bicyclists that's further down where we already. You, you mean the one on the entrance of the bridge right there? Yeah. I mean, the, the improvement we're trying to trying to. Uh, it improves it improves too. the experience from the pedestrians that cross yeah. from the southern end of one center street crossing over there to the middle island mm -hmm. right so then they're only crossing one lane of bike traffic and then they walk in the middle island so there should be no bikes in that area mm -hmm. and that would be significantly better for the pedestrians until they get to the intersection mm -hmm. where there's a full Engagement with both cars and bikes as it is today. I mean, when they said the intersection Chamber Street, 
No, the intersection, the intersection up here. The, the, uh, yes. I mean, what what we, pedestrians we, we, have to deal with here is pretty much what they have to deal with now. Is that anyone anyone who's headed south on a bike instead of being up on the promenade now, maybe down the roadway, and maybe moving across that street and needing to. So the only concern that I have when we're talking about this, I'm sorry, Eric. I, I appreciate the good idea that that was about keeping them connected to that bike path, and then having them. The bicyclists turn. There's no easy way to get them to that bike path, which I get, um, unless you added another traffic signal for just the bicyclists to be able to cross. To be able to cross down here. Yeah, right. Uh, that would I'm, have been my question. Did you think about both an amble scramble for the pedestrians and an amble scramble for bikes, and also a traffic regulation so that you have a release, a hold and release on the bike path on the Brooklyn Bridge? So that you release 15 bikes at a time, it's like a, a, you know, like in LA, you, you know, 2 cars at a time, mm -hmm. you could do the same sort of. You know, so grouping for traffic coming off the bridge that keeps that hairpin from being so treacherous yep. makes it, you know, and then the other question I had is, you know, if the conflict between pedestrians and bicycles exists along that promenade, isn't it better to keep pedestrians? Um, sorry, Eric, but right where Eric wants to put the new bike lane, keep them on the sidewalk and have all pedestrians entering the bridge from the city hall park south of the Brooklyn Bridge over there. So you just remove the conflict in that here. No there's there's there is mass transit exits by one center street on the on the south side of one center. Okay. Which is why they come up into the municipal plaza and right. then they cross at grade there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, down the so you don't want them to come to the crosswalk and come around City Hall. Park. There is a crosswalk there. If you see where that one car is below yeah. where it says Brooklyn Bridge, there's mm -hmm. a crosswalk. There's a crosswalk there. Right. There. I would I would definitely be hindering that crossing. I would make them walk further. That's true. The question is whether or not reducing that conflict is merits that extra mm -hmm. five minute walk. Um, well, I mean, this is if anyone coming off of mass transit here to get to the bridge would then you need to walk down to this crosswalk here at the in the foreground, cross that, come all the way back, and then cross Correct. again up there. Or get out at the other side of the train station. Get out on the yeah. Train yeah. Train yeah. Train. yeah. Um I mean we're we're trying not to remove pedestrian crossings where they already exist. I would agree with that. Because the reality is people will turn around and complain about all the visitors. There are a lot of visitors. Yeah. And they're not gonna remember these weird Go this way and, and exit through that exit from the station. That's unfair to ask of them. Right. Well, then the corralling of the bikes and having a timed release might help with that crossing safety as well. Timed release means a light. It's just an alternating branding green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Also, at both of these crosswalks, could could you? I mean, I don't know if you have access to this, but light lighting you know lights on um, like a, uh, i think it's goldman sachs on the better mm -hmm. see. yeah it has the flashing lights on the mm -hmm. on and the, the crosswalk mm -hmm. that alerts you for, yeah. for on coming yeah, back it's correct it's an idea on the airport it it uh it flashes for both bicyclists and um pedestrians yeah that's um you know it's it's i think we've well, R R F R F B for rapid repeating flashing beacons. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's it's something which we are aware of, but we have not really looked at. We haven't really installed anywhere in the city, but we can look at it for. Like this. Is there any place you want to? It's on, it's, it's on the street, but it's on, it's on a path. Yeah. It's on a path. Yeah, it's within yeah. the the city would be. You know, they, they they exist, but they are typically done in like a private kind of situation mm -hmm. or a capital situation. Not that we've done on street. Mm -hmm. Well, the city would be fantastic to be able to do that. Yeah. As a owner of the city. Um, I guess my other question is why didn't we look at what Carrie is saying and what Eric is saying as possibilities to take the southbound bicycles through some form of organization to the west side? of Center Street going along the park, City Hall Park, so it connects directly with the Park Row bike path. And then there's only one 
crossing for all bicyclists coming from one area, which is where they come out of City Hall Park, plus the bikeway, that, the new bikeway. So there's only one spot mm -hmm. because what this doesn't solve is the two locations that the bicycles come from. We've moved it out of the island and the park, so to speak, put it in the roadbed, but then there's still two ways that the bikes are coming from or the pedestrians. Right, we still have yeah. one way for the car, mm -hmm. from the cars, mm -hmm. and there's still two ways for the bikes and one way for pedestrians. If the bike lane was on the west side of center, then it would be one way for everybody. So there'd be one way for cars, and then all the bikes would come from one side of the intersection over, and all the pedestrians would. So, you understand what I mean by that? No. So if I'm, the bike yes. lane was on the I'm right, to if the bike lane was on the right yeah. side of this photo, okay, and they wanted to get onto the Brooklyn Bridge, at the at the southbound intersection, they would have to take a left turn. Mm -hmm. Any bicyclists coming through City Hall Park come across that intersection as well. So that would put bicyclists coming from City Hall Park and anybody coming down the bike path in the same timed pool for crossing Park Road or Center Street there rather to get onto the Brooklyn Bridge. So there's one spot for bicycles. So you're saying put it where it says where, where, where the center the, street sign. Where this uh, the basically basic where the parked yeah. cars are. Yeah, where, where the, the parked cars, cars are. Yeah. So instead of having it on this side, put it on this side. On the right side. And then that gives the bicyclists a put yeah. one spot and it gives the pedestrians two. They're only at one spot still. Mm -hmm. Right? They're still crossing from the same spot. But the way this is now, you're giving the bicyclists two ways. Mm -hmm. They either coming up on your greenway there, the green road that you have, and they're coming across from City Hall Park. So there's two, two, inter, two yes. interfaces of bicycles from two different directions. For the pedestrians. For the pedestrians. Versus if the bike lane was on the right, right, the the, on, the, on the west side of the street, mm -hmm. then there'd be one entrance for bicyclists, one for pedestrians and one for cars. So a pedestrian would only need to look one way because all the bicycles would be coming from one place. You're talking about down the southern down, end, yeah. yeah. Here, right? Down there. If the bicycles were on that side, not there, then when you get south north, put your finger all the way up where you see the white truck. At that yeah. intersection, yeah. all the bicycles would come from the right. Yeah. All the cars would yeah. be from one spot. Yep. Yeah. It'd be a lot easier for pedestrians because yeah. what you're looking at now is you will have bicyclists coming in on um, immediately next to the pedestrian path, bicyclists coming across from park or from City Hall Park. So basically, it's not really changing much of what you're doing. Just saying, put this bike lane not here, put it here. Yeah, you get rid of this anywhere. What about well, the cyclists that are coming from Lafayette? But but they already they mm -hmm. already stopped. Yeah, they already stopped. They already have to stop if if they follow the traffic laws. They already stop at that intersection. So it would be if you're going to the Brooklyn Bridge, you're, you're going to the right. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Yes. Would be easier too so if they went from Chambers Street, Street because right now the, if you're crossing Chambers Street over to the municipal building, they're all cutting you off to get to the middle of the yes, road. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, they, they, sure. they'd either stay straight or if you're going further south, you go to the right. You yeah. have a, if there's right a track again. Yeah. But you would need to get to that set, you would, yeah, right think, where Christine is pointing, you would need to get there and then cross over to the parked vehicle lane. In order to keep them across, that's what I'm saying. You would, you would get the cyclists would get stuck right there for any of the cyclists that are trying to park. Exactly. Right. Here. It would get but stuck. But isn't, right isn't it a wider U-turn versus a hairpin at the back? Yeah, it is a better U-turn. It's a better U-turn versus a hairpin at the back. Also, when the cars are, it's, uh, this is part of my question. I'm sorry for jumping in. Like when the cars are parked. I mean, when the, when the cars are stopped at the pedestrian crosswalks out there, 
the bikes have to wait on the left side for the cars to go. Mm -hmm. And then when the cars stop, then they can cross over to the west side. Mm -hmm. What this would do, what Tammy's suggestion is, yeah, it would be that. so that when the cars go, the bikes can still go on the west side. Mm -hmm. uh, then they would they're turning off the chamber. Right, and when hugging the curb, when, they would go, they'd be able to go. Yeah, they'd go. And, and what, so what I'm saying is they would, they can still turn. What Roy understands what I'm saying. In this current example, the bikes can still turn, whether or not they have the light. Correct. It, yes, here they but can. But if you put them on the other side of the street, they can't. They can't turn until they're turning. And then how do you. But well, when so the cars are stopped, the, the bikes from Park Row can cross over mm -hmm. to the Brooklyn Bridge with the pedestrians at the pedestrian park. Yes, they can come back. While the other ones are stopped on the left side. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you're trying to say. Correct. I just think it's a lot of intersect. Mm -hmm. And if we could narrow it down so and everybody could learn. Well, the, the issue with having a uh, we, but what you're and I, I, I get what you're saying. It's 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 a it's a, it's a simpler design up here, uh, up but here. down like up here, down here though we require yeah. cyclists to have to queue for. Yeah. They they cross this. They they they're waiting at the top end of the, the Chambers intersection uh, coming from Lafayette. They would have to cross where the green they currently get now, and then wait uh, to then be able to cross again. So we don't have any room to have anyone queue right here because but while, while that while this while people are queuing here waiting to go further south, you've also got people who are coming off the bridge, the people who are trying to get on the bridge. Mm -hmm. So we don't this this space is very very small and really is not not built well, for that 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 level of queuing. This question for you would be queuing. Yeah, they queue all the way back to yeah. the they'd crosswalk. The they'd be in the crosswalk. Yeah. Yeah. Queue back to what crosswalk? This one. Yeah. Why can't you queue them before? Right. Why can't you queue them before you they get to the to that to this uh, one, that chamber street? They are they are queuing on the other yeah. side of the street because the way the signal timing works, they wait at the sort of the north side, you know, sort of where the laptop essentially is, like further further north. They wait to, to cross the intersection uh there. Uh they when they get the green light, that's when you would you'd be able to proceed up onto the bridge or go go further south. But if you're if we switch the lane to the other side of the street here, then they would have to cross and then wait because there'd be yeah, but what southbound you, vehicles. What, what that are, thing that is, are, why can't you do them before to make two different types of choices? One towards the Brooklyn Bridge side and one towards the there's a bus stop on the other side of the, the street. There's a bus stop where here. Yeah. Street, yeah. yeah. You know, yes, on, on, on the like west side of Shane on, on Lafayette, like uh, where the, the laptop is, yeah. okay. right where the laptop is, the the bikes, the the bike lanes are right in the middle, as we all know, right? Yeah. yeah. So when I'm when I'm biking, when I'm on my bike, I stop right there and I wait for that light to change so that I can get on either to the Brooklyn Bridge or I can go to Park Row. If I was trying to go to Park Row. I would have to stop right there because mm -hmm. the the we'll light stop. to get to the parked car area you have would not be my way. light. So what I'm saying, and I think what Patrick is saying, is that there would be a bottleneck right here. there. Mm -hmm. There would be a bottleneck here. On but this why side. couldn't why couldn't that light serve both? I mean, they're they're working on looking at the traffic light, and as I forgot the expression that Karen used on it. But why couldn't if that light turns green as you're coming right from the bottom? You're stopped there. If it turns green, why couldn't you choose to go this way? Either right. directly onto Park Row or directly onto the bridge. Right. Well, you, you have, have a right hand vehicles. signal for both bicycles and mm -hmm. vehicular traffic there. Where you can do you can. You could. I think you could. You could make a right lane, a right turn only for people who are going from Lafayette onto Chambers. And for bicycles, right hand turn to the park car. Lane. So then you'd empty them here, the, and then they'd be on this corner. The bicycles waiting. No, no bicycles at a right turn. They would the vehicular oh, traffic would go right, and the bicycles would go to the right fork. Yeah. And then on when you have traffic going from Lafayette to mm -hmm. that wants to proceed south, you have the left bike signal and the straight vehicular signal. So that the Brooklyn Bridge entrance is. Is clean for the, the, the only the only linchpin I think that's the problem is what you're talking about is how do people coming off the Brooklyn Bridge no problem, go. Yeah. I, but I think I think the U-turn 
a a wider U-turn is better than a pinch point. But it's a wider U-turn, like in a crosswalk, pretty much. You're trying to reduce. You're we're talking about reducing the interaction between pedestrian and bikers, but they'd be doing that U-turn across the whole. No, they'd be doing it behind between the signal and the and the park. You could do it. You could do it back. I don't see why you couldn't. Additional. You so signal. you'd have. You have an additional signal. It it would mean that anybody could take that U-turn at the same time as the southbound um, cars are right turn only. So if you're coming this way, you'd be able to take it. Not in the pedestrian crosswalk, it's a bicycle crosswalk. Yeah. I mean, they've got to have a cross for the bicycles. What if we put in, in the bicycle you know, crosswalk? You know what I mean? So put those white things. If we're, if we're, if we're affecting traffic anyway, we're yeah. affecting traffic. But the thing that I think is a loss to. <laughs> It is, yes. it is, it is, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But in finding the most ideal situation, I just don't think that. Adding in any kind of other phase to this intersection, because we have a Barnes dance, the, uh, you know, the all head phase there, uh, like we have a combination of a very, very. High demand vehicle uh, access point and also a, a Barnes dance. So adding in a, another phase to that, that's that would be able to make this bicycle movement possible in one phase instead of having people move once and then queue again to, to move again. Uh, that, that's that would that's where we'd start to see some significant impacts for, for everybody trying to use this in a second. I just don't see why we couldn't do where you have your total linchpin, a U-turn, you know, and a bike crossing there to get it off of the following intersection. So there's one spot at the most dangerous intersection, which is this has so much control over it, it's not nearly as bad as the south one yes. for pedestrians. And if to me, if you could get all the bicycles again at one spot to be able to cross, that seems like it'd be safer for the students at Pace, mm -hmm. for the entrances at City Hall, and for any pedestrians going down, because then you wouldn't have any bicycles going southbound along the, uh, what did you call that? The park area? The promenade? The promenade. Yeah. I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but my concern then is the bikers versus the cars, because how, how many of the cars that are turning onto center go all the way through? You were saying, is it seven? Uh, that are oh, right. it's, it's, yeah, it's the kind of set vehicles are right. turning on the bridge from so south. Wouldn't we rather have the bikers interact with the cars down south than up at Chambers? Where it's, yeah, like, that's, that's a good point. point. Uh, uh, can I suggest something to where I'm not? You know, the bikers are expected to turn when the vehicles are stopped at the crosswalk. They're expected to turn and then go into pedestrian traffic and how many bikes are we expecting to turn at that point that are not going to create a bottleneck of bikes in that crosswalk intersection that are going to conflict with pedestrian traffic yeah they, they i mean they will have to turn i mean they're, they're currently doing that now but the, there's they would have to turn there but the difference between having to that there as for as opposed to elsewhere is that there is queuing space for bikes that's protected for them, so that's it's but enough space not, for people to to wait and make that movement. But you're place. not solving the issue for the pedestrians. We're solving it for the bicyclists. That's both of them here, which is like, I, I like before coming here, I see it was like, oh, this is probably is going to be an easy resolution debate. You know, we're improving the experience on the Brooklyn Bridge for cyclists, that sort of thing. But this is part of my like, this is the worst part of my night whenever I come to these meetings. Because I have to walk through there, and there's already seat bikes on the sidewalk. I literally got almost got hit by two on the way here. I tried to stand there in that uh, midsection again, almost got hit uh, by a car and cyclists. So it's really making this a very negative experience for pedestrians, and I think that's where we really need to think about because there are more pedestrians than there are cyclists. I know we are leaning towards cyclists because that's better, but that's to get them out of cars. You have to think about pedestrians. And so I think that's where this falls short. I think what we're saying here is that this whole thing needs to be redesigned, as we were talking about before, is, oh, yeah. is 
is this considered a permanent solution or are there still efforts to rethink this entire yeah, this the the usage of this particular area these yeah. two this one block here has changed so much in the past three or four years mm -hmm. uh, that 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 yeah this this is something where i mean everything we have here is 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 built out of temporary materials it it could be moved if necessary could be completely, uh, re you know, removed if necessary. It's 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 all temporary. But like so, something like this, with a mixture of of like very old, very uh, uh, sort of the been there forever type of stuff, and then like these workarounds around it. Yeah, like this is something where we definitely want to look at a more comprehensive solution that really works well for everybody, because we have changed how this functions so much in the past several years. That's mm -hmm. that's that's definitely a, something we want to to look at. Okay. I'm just looking and saying that we know that case is building out a couple brand new buildings down there, including a new performing arts center for themselves. So the expectation is for more pedestrian traffic, not mm -hmm. less. Mm -hmm. um, so. And it's going to be on the pace side. Sorry, I might have missed this, but did you have a timeline for this or is this all still like in work in progress? I mean, this is something we'd be looking at to to install next year at the earliest. So yeah, there's a lot of time to you know if if when we say a lot of time, yeah. we're also in September now. I right? understand. Yeah, time to set. Let's get sorry. Yeah, I'm um, let's get Rosa. She's been waiting forever. <laughs> Rosa, you're still there. Yes. Hi. Sorry about that. Um, quick question. So I walk that. Uh, crossing all the time on Center Street um, from City Hall Park to the promenade of the Brooklyn Bridge. And I mean, I love the tourists, but I also think it would be really awesome if you could very, very clearly, like legible by like a one year old, understand that there's a separate crossing for bicycles and a separate crossing for pedestrians because the tourists don't understand it, right? Like they don't understand the visual cues, whatever, you know, minimal visual cues that there are. And so if you could like literally stencil bicycles, like one feet apart, <laughs> all over repeating and make it the green color and like make the curb cut green, um, just as, like scream it from the rooftops. This is for bikes and this is for people because I feel like I'm a pedestrian, but I feel sad for it. The poor bicyclists that are trying to weave through all the tourists that don't know where they are and they're like queuing up to line up at the like to cross at the bicycle curb cut um and the bicyclists are just sort of stuck there and i imagine that even in the new proposal well, you know, maybe in the new proposal no the pedestrians are still going to keep trying to cross there <laughs> because the curb cuts there the instinct is to go where the curb cut is right like i, I feel like if there was really simple stupid signage that would Help a lot. And have you also for the pedestrians considered any sort of like curb extensions to shorten these crosswalks and give more space for pedestrians to wait? I mean, the crosswalks are already very short. It's really just trying, yeah. trying to right the south side yeah, side. yeah, trying, trying to organize this as much as possible and separate people as much as possible. Just yeah. because, like the, the just having bikes mixing with. Pedestrians through the promenade there. That's yeah. that's really that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're tr we're trying to give people their own space as much as possible. If if I can ask a question, if what about if we are having the bikes and the pedestrian crosswalks like next to each other like that? Mm -hmm. Put those white sticky things if you can knock over in between. Is what I mean? They're, if, they're, what they call they're, yeah. You can't because there's cars that go past. No, no, no. On the sidewalk. Where you're going to be um, not in the crosswalk, but on the sidewalk, so people queue up on the right sides. We don't typically do that on a sidewalk for ADA reasons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really? Okay. Thank okay. You. Good point. No. No. Okay. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Where do the pedestrians access the bridge from? This from this? Not here. It's not from, here at all. So. From the promenade. Mm -hmm. People, people walk, people walk. Oh, this at this work. corner. Where is the pedestrian? People are coming in from the bridge either from from over here, right. uh, this side. They're they're crossing this way, this crosswalk right here. They go back here, and, oh, or they're coming from City Hall Park. If this thing will move, right. where is it? There we go. Oh, up oh, here, up there. it's kind of hard to see, but this cross there's a crosswalk right here. And if they're coming from the A C E or the yeah, it's going to IRT. Yeah, they're coming along Chamber Street. 
Well, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, two, one, two, three, nine, yeah, yeah. red line. Um, they're coming across on Chamber Street. Correct. So where is the pedestrian signage? Maybe this is what Rosa is getting at. Where is the wayfinding for the pedestrians coming from Chambers in front of Tweed looking to get on the Brooklyn Bridge? The wayfinding signage? Or uh, any any pedestrian sort of clear pathway to the Brooklyn Bridge from the south. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. With yeah, yeah. Not, I mean, I'm sorry, but I mean, everybody's it's just a simple yeah, question. If you just, where is it? Yeah. I mean, um, is there I'm not exactly sure if there is any or not. There isn't. Okay. So I'm just, when you redesign, because mm -hmm. it sounds like there's some iterations mm -hmm. that might happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're talking you're talk about the people who are coming from chambers, like, over on this side? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, saying, like, you'd want to yep. walk down They will here walk in that bike lane. Over there. They think they're going to get to the Brooklyn Bridge. Got it. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's so true. That's yep. what happens at the Battery. Thank you for giving me the mm -hmm. yeah. so That's what happens around the Battery. Yeah. People walk in the bike lane because they think it's the sidewalk directly to where they want right. to go. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to think about how to, to de-conflict those two modes of mm -hmm. transportation and make it clear how each is supposed to access the bridge. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Jess. Uh, the traffic coming off of the Brooklyn Bridge, it always queues up. It, it gets it gets crowded. It actually goes further onto the bridge. Because I see here that the uh, the southbound center of street would be given an additional, you know, to, you know, additional second. That's that's delay. That's, so, that's a delay. That's a delay. That's oh, a delay. delay. Yeah. And does that reduce, does that increase the whole cycle, the whole cycle time where there's less time to actually make the turn? From from Center Street to Chambers, or, or to go north. Like, del delay is kind of an, a difficult thing to conceptualize, but it basically is like the amount of time you're going to be waiting, and sort of the it's like we we can show you things like level of service or other other sort of metrics of traffic, but those really don't really have any meaning in the real world. Delay is really the only one. Um, but what I'm trying to show here is that the delay at this intersection for vehicles is already during typical peak hour conditions is already pretty minimal. And by removing one travel lane, the delay is still rather minimal. So, so, so then that delay does not increase the overall cycle. You know, no, overall. So, signal timing and cycle okay. lengths will remain the same. So yeah, please just keep in mind that the uh, bridge traffic coming off the bridge, it, it always gets backed up. Mm -hmm. Anything that you we took a lane out of the bridge in 2021, uh, coming coming into in, in Manhattan. So that's and I, I have to say, for the amount of backup that it has, it is the it has been one of the best things that happened for the pedestrians. Mm -hmm. So I know. So we're gonna take another lane on the other side so that we have one way black lane to Brooklyn. We need to access uh there's uh maintenance for maintenance reasons we can't actually take on the other side. We the crews need to be able to access oh. the middle of the bridge. So there's and yeah, doing doing a lane on the other side, we can take it down to one lane during maintenance time. So that's so don't like it. That's an awesome. <laughs> um I mean I think we could do a sort of positive with conditions resolution saying that like rethink the whole thing <laughs> yeah. we like the concept we yeah, like it's a so. great idea to add a protected bike lane but where exactly that is and how it and how it affects the pedestrians on the most southern intersection is the basic concern so whether right. because i don't i mean this is a fantastic idea yes yeah. yeah. this is a great idea and it would be in, Incredibly good for bicyclists and pedestrians, but not as good for pedestrians. Yeah. Really, it doesn't solve the major. It gets bicycles off the promenade, but doesn't it improve the, the intersection yeah. necessarily. But but also, if they're gonna, if we're saying that, could we ask the, uh, for a further study back down Chamber Street to see the effect on the traffic of going to the lane? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just yeah. asked to revisit this next month for the yeah. different design. Yeah. So, okay, right. I, do, I do ride this um, every day. Uh, so, I do see like all the different interactions. Um, I think, like, for if you're coming down off the bridge here, most people are coming straight. Yeah. City north. 
So if you stop people to make this turn, you know, to interact with traffic here, they'll have to stop here and all those people going straight will start queuing back up here. So you will like create that blockage. Um, because if traffic, you know, vehicle traffic is going this way, then then the bikes are just you well, know, going through. Straight, that wouldn't change. And then well they'd have well, to be blocked. But if you'd have to if, if you said you're coming block, here to go this way, got it, got it. That would walk. You're gonna have to stop here. Mm -hmm. And then all those people going straight there are all gonna stop. If yeah. you just run them through here, then everything kind of continues to flow. If you move this over one, I don't think it changes that interaction with all of the people crossing here uh, on the south crossing the south promenade that much uh, because, you're still are crossing you're still going to cross you know but you only have one at spot night. that the bicycles come from you're you're what you're doing is instead of having bicycles coming on on the left side and bicycles coming from the right because that's what you currently will have with this and that's what exists currently Right, you have bikes in the promenade, and your bikes coming through City Hall Park. So you're eliminating them from the promenade, but they're still coming from two directions at that one intersection. Is there a light? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a light there. But you know that's why the thought was if it's on the right, then all the bikes are coming from one side. It doesn't seem like that big of a difference. For you have to stop right down at some point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you know the the left. The left turning cars, like crossing the bikes crossing, might be a little muddy there. But um, I, the, generally, the pedestrians and bikes do okay there. Uh, you know, just just from riding it every day. I expect more bikes and more pedestrians. Can I say one thing? Please. Sure, please. As a cyclist myself who rides this every day, and for those that don't know me, I'm John Blasco from Congress member Dan Goldman's office, and our office is around the corner on Dwayne and uh, Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, so the only thing I would know, and it's not me because I follow the rules, <laughs> but for cyclists that are coming from Lafayette, if the bike lane were to be where the parked cars are, I can tell you mm. they're probably reckless cyclists who will not stop there to then have to turn, they will do this diagonal cross mm -hmm. from yeah. the middle of Lafayette bike lane just to get to that. Like they will do a diagonal ride. They do already. Crossing the- That's why I almost got hit by today. The vehicular traffic. Yeah, they see them in that way. You, you weren't expecting to look that way, right? Were you? I had, I had the right of way. Mm -hmm. We're crossing the street mm -hmm. and he, was coming southbound on Lafayette and just ran the light. Yeah. Okay, so what if we said, all right, this is what I'd say if it was me. It was my resolution and it was King. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> idea in the short term, but long term, we want to keep open the possibility of redesigning this for XYZ reasons yeah. for all the reasons we've said. Yeah, as Perfect. That sounds fair to me. I'm good with that. Uh, I'd, love, I'd love to also see two stats studied. One, how many bicyclists come off the Brooklyn Bridge going south? Because mm -hmm. that's not a statistic that we were shown. So, yeah, yeah, um, because people, then it's a difference of hairpin turn versus gentle U and how that works could be a moot point or not. Um, and what the effect on the traffic is based on real world conditions today, one lane on Chambers Street was brutal and the traffic on Chambers going to the bridge was backed up beyond Broadway, beyond yeah. Church. Beyond church. No, it was beyond church. Right. So you're saying there was only one eastbound lane on, on Chambers? Chambers Street. Because there's only there's currently only one, one eastbound lane. On there's Chambers. only one. That's all there is. Yeah. It the street was blocked up. Like people when you come down Chambers Street, you can take the right turn. Right. But at the end, there's usually, even though there's one, there's also a drop off lane. There's a, like there's a and there was not that today. Um, the only big issue I have uh, with your wording, and it's something I've learned. Well, the wording is word, word it any way that you yeah, want. I don't like short term and long term okay. because they're going to define how they want, and they're going to tell us in eight years that mm -hmm. that's short term. That's why we're coming back to you now, fifteen years later. 
So um, I would want to be a little bit more specific. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I have a suggestion. In terms, in terms of the study, but also when PACE builds its dorms out. And as PACE is growing, we need to have studies each time something new comes up. What about when you visit when the PACE dorms are done? Yeah. The studies agreed. It's really funded, and we're sort of joking ourselves by saying that. So let's Perfect. be specific with what we're asking for if we want to reduce it. But that seems like going to be tough, you know, pinch points that are going to come up when we have more stuff down here. That would make sense. So I'd like for them to come back, you all to come back um, closer, like when you've revised the plan, potentially when you've done some of these studies that they um, that we've asked for, if, if you can. I know, again, that's a funding thing. Um, and then we can have the language in there that, you know, for um, a more permanent solution or a long-term solution, and we'll keep the, the conversation going until fully resolved. Well, we want to revisit and keep the conversation going. Come on, combine those two. Sure. Yeah. I just get nervous about short term because we got that. Yeah, but I think the changes are going to be ongoing. So keeping the conversation going and revisiting it in the future is, is realistic to ask for. Yeah. I think everybody knows things keep changing. Mm -hmm. um, I, from, from the discussion, there's a lot of disagreement on what they proposed. I, I think the idea is. Generally, we all support making it better for the pedestrians, but I don't know how we can make this an approval if there's so much um, disagreement on what their plan is. Everyone had suggestions on how it should be, not what they said, what the <laughs> DOT said. So how can we give, say, saying that, say, say we support it? Well, I mean, it's not letting perfect be the enemy of the good. Right? Well, I also think Jess re reflected on looking at the comments made within the whereas section. I think yeah. they acknowledge that it's not perfect, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. I'd love to see this whole thing. I think we great. definitely need to support a solution that improves it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts on that. I think we all agreed. I don't think there was anybody who disagreed on that. Right. And I think that should be the overarching request. It definitely with, improves. Yeah. With, with other because it improves one spot. But doesn't solve the issues on most of them. And we can say that. Right. And we can say, we just, like, sorry, are we just kicking the can? Like, why not just say, Patrick, you've got a great start. This is awesome. We love the, the, the plan generally in concept. Come back and let's solve this problem and this problem and get it done right the first time. No yeah. temporary. Do we, we have time for that? Let's do the thinking. We have to and get so it right for this. now and revisit when Patrick says, hey, We've got a change in circumstances. He'll come back in three years if that's the right time. But why not take a month and get it right? Three years is too short. On the, yeah. the only way to really fix everything that's here is in some sort of capital solution, which yeah, would yeah, like ten years. Yeah, like, right. I don't mean the perfect solution. I'm just saying let's deal with some of the suggestions and issues that were brought up tonight. Is is coming back at the beginning of October going to delay your plan for the temporary? Well, we know that they can only really work during the construction season, right? So if they've got a plan now, they're coming to us, then they've set in motion what the plans would be to be able to try and implement in Q when the weather is nice and you can do this kind of stuff. So that's like I'm thinking when we're looking, if we're asking him to come back, okay. we have to say the question really is, can you come back with an alternate solution by the end of Q4 so it could be implemented in Q2 next year? Um, Q4, meaning like December, October, October. I'd, I'd say next January meeting. be a more would, reasonable. Would it be possible to still get it implemented in 2025? Yeah, if we're going to be able to come back in January, mm -hmm. yes. So then I would be yeah. supporting that. Yeah, so I think what you're getting at is maybe let's not do a resolution tonight. Yeah. Do you want to support it when it's closer to something that we all agree on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least look at what we talked about and suggested and, and come back and, and see if you can put parking on Elk Street or yeah. talk to DCAS about the Elk Street lot, really to get get those cars off the street. Mm -hmm. Period. And and look closely at that at the conflicting the promenade area and the two way but, traffic for bicycles in the area. Well, I can tell there you is a solution point, somewhere. The point. people made in the past that they specifically said they wanted to be conditioned included keeping no no standing on chambers mm -hmm. uh, to, to move the press off of Center Street to other locations, not to the one proposed. 
that no SAPO is, which wouldn't be in your jurisdiction anyway, so we can deal with that. But just so people know that that's been said. Um, and also an enforcement plan of two to three months, which again, isn't GOT's jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But we can push it someplace else. So there's jurisdiction, but my question to you is going to be, I don't mind not doing a resolution. I'm good with that. Yeah. Is everybody sure you don't want to do a resolution? I want to invite Patrick back October 6th or whatever. Oh, it is. Him back either way. Or November. Well, no, when you're ready to come back. January. 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 So he's saying January. Yeah. Yeah. Does I mean, back I, and, and so we also need a resolution from you so we can understand what we're being asked. Oh, so you want that would be helpful? Yeah. Let's do a resolution asking them to come back in, in yeah. January with all the concerns that were raised by the committee. It's a great start, but not a final solution from our perspective. And then you have it in writing as yeah. what we've said. Yeah, that's specific yes. Yeah. Jeff, I'm going to ask you again if we agree with the concept, it is a problem that needs to be resolved. Yes. Being in yes. Absolutely. Yeah, there are multiple issues, so we would like them to come back yeah. 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 three months before moving forward to the final plan. I have a crazy question so for you. It's, it's so not current, current, and we do it as well as that them. they don't do things like that. But when we're talking about that turn, right, and trying to queue and things like that, what Eric's saying about wide sidewalks and other things, there is a real opportunity to take a look at maybe, and I. People will yell at me about park space and I get it, but maybe instead of being confined into chambers that they have you turn into chambers, maybe it's what do they call those like um roundabouts. Almost like a bicycle roundabout. I hate to put it that way. But like you, you come off, you lose some of the sidewalk over by after the crosswalk because you'd have the bicycles kind of do a loop through there. To be able to get back on up on the sidewalk or are you talking about the south i'm no, talking about losing some sidewalk space to allow for a wider which side bicycles and the problem with with that is anytime we start changing curb lines where they are um that's that that shifts that timeline of anything we could actually okay. do way in the future anytime you move curb lines that's where things start exactly. to take 10 years we never mind drainage we have to redo underlying utilities said nothing yes. i said nothing all of, everything we're proposing today is all on the surface it's yeah, something you gotcha. do quickly and also gotcha. remove quickly or change quickly so gotcha. anything anytime you dig dig that yeah but then the dot they do the construction themselves they they do the curbs they do the sidewalks we do dig we do in-house in-house in and also I, I, we do typically islands those sort of things that don't affect drainage because the water can go around them once you start changing the curb like where the water goes to when it rains that's the part where it gets very expensive and very time consuming those are capital. yes those are capital improvements that's yeah. the capital long-term yeah. part of what you guys are talking about in yeah. the resolution so it's not it's not excluded from this that's it's not excluded part. but like, yeah. like 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 just said let's not be and let perfect be the enemy of good. Let's get a, a solution that works and then right. take a look at capital projects for a 10 year project for something that's right. a promenade change, a sidewalk change, a accessibility change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One thing that I think would be important for the board to include in that uh, language as well, and I hope that DOT would actually work on immediately yeah. is. To the point that Rosa made earlier of that cross point from the promenade to City Hall Park mm -hmm. and just trying to make it more visible, more clear, mm -hmm. because it is true, right? With all the amount of tourists that are coming in from various parts of the world, language access is a very big thing. Mm -hmm. Not everyone speaks English, not everyone reads English. So something to really highlight, whether it's a green mark or in a, in a whatever the Red heart, whatever. In the of people. It's, 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 it's that is something energy. that I think that whether or not that concept moves forward, I hope that DOT would work on immediately. Okay. I think we can. Can we or, or, or can we vote on? Can we call the call the question? Is second. that a question? I second that. Uh, yeah. 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 Is it okay to vote? On something that like has been yeah. written. Yeah, I'm sure. Several things, and everybody's in agreement. I mean, it's a delightful. Confer to the to the recording to make it. Yes, I rely heavily on the table. Yeah, yeah. So no, I think that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so I call motion. So yeah, it'll be assumed to be yes unless you vote no, refuse, or. 
I almost look online. So anyway, are there any no's? Are there any refusals? Are there any abstentions? And it's unanimous and thank you because no one's voting on them. That's awesome. Thank you for, for tackling it. Yeah, thank you yeah, for recognizing yeah. it. And yes. Thank you for taking it on. And listening to us yes. and being willing to come back in January and change it up a little bit. That's amazing. Yeah, we're really excited. Thank you. Oh, let's can we go to our next one before I have to run. Yeah. Yeah. Slow zone. Yeah. No, yeah. Now sweet. Yeah. Maybe no. Do I get this too? So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Yes, sir. Yes. Be careful. Right. You like to send your phone. Thanks. Ride safe. Yeah, ride safe. Bye. I'll let you know because then I have to resolve it. I don't have to go down. I don't have to go down. What I did was put together some information that I've gathered so you can visualize it while hearing it. But you might want to about a regional flow zone. And this. Again, a screen. Yeah, I have a we have to look at this one. That one I have I have an initial question about it. But this is from the letter from the DOT. Yeah. Make phone calls so fast for that. East of the FDR, but includes West Street. Yeah. Yes. West? I looked at that too. Twenty five mile on West. We're gonna get it. No, it's the next one that has the wording. We don't we just traffic it's the wording. Okay, we just tell us why. Okay. Okay, so the third, the third is Sammy's law that there are new condemned in 2025. The next one is talking us about we are elected lucky winner of one of the regional flow zones. Yeah. And it's a low Manhattan regional flow zone. And this is exactly East. what's going to be done. Inclusive of West Street and Battery Park City. Yeah. And so I got to the point, Jess. Because some people can't see them online yeah. or on the phone. And they, they are reading and they're just like, I don't know. You just read them pretty well. Yeah. Uh, so, following areas in your district have been approved for reduction in speed limits. Mm -hmm. The entirety of Lower Manhattan, south of Canal and Rutgers Street, east of the FDR Drive, and inclusive of West Street and Battery Park City. But not including the FDR Drive. Right. Right. West Street below Canal will be lowered to 25 miles per hour. Manhattan bridge speed limits will be lowered as you approach the Street. Okay, and we're in the 60 day of notification period. So that's why we're acting, and there will be a resolution tonight. So they'll give you one chance at this thing. But the next one is more detailed than that. The time to get but going. that's different than what the last slide said because the last slide said West Street. Is 25. This one says West Street is 20. Mm -hmm. No, no, so, no, 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 Routes. So that means Broadway, which is a truck route, and Trinity. There are only three. There are three truck routes in Lower Manhattan. There's Broadway, which is the southbound. There's West Street, which is two ways, and then I think it's Church, Church Trinity, which is northbound. Right. Right. And it will be treated any differently. Yeah, yeah. They would. Uh, so they don't do a carve out for truck routes. Okay. Right. So the question I have is: Would those be Lower to 10? No, they would be 20. They'd be 20 because it did say that there are some streets that would be 10. So that is yeah. for the 10 miles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for well, including what it used to be and this. Oh, good. So oh, awesome. Go on. <laughs> just go on. Okay. Yeah. Then just that the signs, the signage will be, will be posted to indicate the lower speed limit. And we are told the NYPD will be enforcing these new speed limits as they. As they sure and <laughs> on the roof. Give you a number of sketches. This was reported in the news. Current status 
The last change was 10 years ago. Hmm. They dropped from 30 to 25 miles per hour in general. Not so much, otherwise code speed. We currently have 25 and 30 mile per hour speed limits in our district, 30 mostly being West Street. Mm -hmm. But they're really all going to be dropped by five miles per hour. So in the DOT proposal, the regional slow zone for roadways below and including Canal and Rutgers will reduce by five miles per hour to 20 miles per hour. West Street speed limits, again below Canal Street, uh, will be reduced. From 30 to 25 miles an hour. The speed limit will be reduced to 10 miles per hour on all current and future streets for pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists to share the right of way, such as on shared streets. And in 10 mile an hour limits will apply to open streets that have substantial design upgrades. And they have not been specified in our district, but that's just the general statement of the DOT. Question, shared street, what does that, does that mean when you've got the roadway and then you've got the painted bicycle lane in it? Yes. No, it refers, the shared, yeah, the shared street refers to a street where there is painted um, pedestrian space as well. So if you think of Broadway, like in the 20s by the Flatiron building, you have those mm -hmm. like a lot of stories. Oh, okay, so it, it's so it's it's there's chairs in the middle of it, yeah. whatever else. Okay. And then that one stretch to the right next to where the bowl is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only one I can think of in our district. So Thank the you. only question that I have that I find um, really important to understand is there are currently at least three that I know of DOT studies between city and state that are going on at the moment. There is a DOT study that's involved with the Chinatown Working Group that mm -hmm. analyzes streets that connect uh, north and south for Canal Street, and especially over by Rutgers and in that area, for both, and it's testing speed limits and access that will affect the directions of Park Row and the conversations around St. James Place and others. So I would like to know how all of this is taken into account there because when they're talking about traffic and speed limits and that's that's a big thing i don't need to go into you know what that study is about there's also a state dot traffic study that is um we understand from our elected officials that is going from 59th street to the battery on west street and talking about uh alternative uses on west street or and Accessibility and traffic, um, bicycles, motors, and away. vehicles, trucks, and stuff. So, I'd like to know how this is being accounted for and perceived and looked at and included in those two studies specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a third traffic study that was being done that I remember. I've lost track of where it is. But I'd like to understand with this announcement. How that affects those two studies, because those two studies were very specifically looking at speeds. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so I have to bring that back, um, especially for the release of Park Row study that we're expecting to complete um, for, uh, at the beginning of next year. Um, so this may not already be implemented by that point, uh, but I, I can. I will assume that you're thinking of future when this will be implemented and what that means. Um, so we'll we'll have to I'll bring that back, um, folks managing the study and likewise for the other studies as well. And can we even think Canal Street with the third? That's one of that's that's, that's definitely one. Yeah. No, there's one the group. Chinatown Working Group uh, one. There's a Canal Street one. There's the West Side Highway. I'm missing. I'm sorry. I just can't. Okay. It, the filing cabinet's a little full um, of my brain. But so the problem that I have is when we're taking a look and all these traffic studies have been designed for looking at speed and looking at improvements, and we are now having a holistic look at solving speed durs. Mm. But then how does that impact and look at what the studies are? Because there, there is impact. You can't, I, I cannot have state and local, state and city DOT come back and say, we don't think it's going to matter mm -hmm. to our study because then I'm going to say, then why? But that's not our current speed limit. Correct. Then maybe we should be looking at the studies for the problem is there's a timeline to the studies. Mm -hmm. How does this fit in? 
will the will the studies be adjusted accordingly? How, I need the experts no, to come back to us. I'm not going to make a supposition. And and we've got 60 days to talk about it. When is this implemented? Is it when like the fifth of last month? We sent this August fact. fifth, so that would be. It's um, still the national board meeting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Correct. It's, it's starting the first soon. Week in okay. October. Right. So actually, that's a very smart move. We should, if I may, throw this out there for the other resolution. We want to take into account when there's studies to the change in speed, which they probably will have to. I would like that to be included in a resolution. To, that, to the first one. With our public comment. With, 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 with the public comment. With the public comment, because the public comment goes back to DOT. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I think that we need to refer and mention to all that. Agreed. Question. That being one of these all the DOT studies, both okay. city and state, right. be no, adjusted, we about, inclusive, right. reactive to this change. Yes. And when is this change going to happen? This, I have, we, uh, we don't have the exact implementation date yet. It's dependent on after we receive the feedback and, but maybe I could be as soon as the end of the year. Well, we'll let you know when the date is fine. They had originally said targeting for the end of the year, but it might yeah. go into early next year. So right. from exactly. the very beginning, they were saying it may not be finished implementation this year. And I love the fact that it would also apply to bicyclists. Um, but I, uh, you want the next one that raises because I know the issue. Do you have more slides? Sorry, I jumped the gun only because you're peacing out. I, I'm peacing out, and I appreciate all of the time and attention, and I apologize for the early departure. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thanks for a great meeting, yeah. and thank you for being a role model for our brand new meeting room. You are the first pioneers. Yeah. I love that. Uh, yes, I, I, there were some issues raised with me about what about e bikes. Mm -hmm. So I went to the DMV website and pulled their information specifically on e vehicles. And it's illegal to operate an electric scooter in excess of 15 miles per hour. We can't set rules by which are legal because that's a problem. Class one e bikes, maximum 20 miles per hour. Uh, class two, also up to 20 miles per hour, other than the person could be using their own power beyond 20 miles per uh -huh. hour because the bike will either assist them up to. In class three bikes though can go up to 25 miles per hour. You see them going faster than that, you know somebody has rigged the bike yeah. and altered the structure. Again, it's not legal. We can't really deal with what happens that's illegal, but we go crazy with cars and trucks as well. Will the city bikes and everything be calibrated so that will be, I guess that will be it. State law. This is state state law. Law. This exists this today. Like that. This is what it would say with the DMV. Got it. Uh, and it is citywide. It is statewide. There's no reason they're going to change it because of our slow zones. Yeah. Because cars aren't restricted to only going the speed of the roads. Yeah. I know some cities and out some places are now locating requiring that on future cars that they be speed limited. They go that read the speed limit of the street and then exceed, but that's the future. But anyhow, bikes and e-scooters can operate on highways with a with a posted speed limit of 30 miles per hour. So actually they're already legal on West Street. They are legal, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize they were legal on West Street, but they are. According that's insane. To so they I still will be at 20 yes. off, but it's no change. And when they cross the border at Canal Street at 30. There'd be no real change. Yeah. So that's what I got from the DMV to update those kinds of questions. Thank you. I think that's it. That's well, okay, some of our requests that we've made about streets, just so we also are compliant with our past history here of preference. Uh, Vision Zero corridor near our Canal Street, which is now included, Sixth Avenue and West Street. Which is also included. Got all? Yeah. So we have asked for some slowing and we have asked to, to the pedestrian priority area in FIDA. So it isn't as if our district hasn't been asking for slowing of students. Okay. We have been. And I want to point that out to people as we move forward with discussion and please, what do people want to say or ask? Cody. Okay. With the enforcement, though. Um, will this call for any sort of more rigorous um, 
Because I mean, we, our tickets. I guess so. I mean, because oh, I have a question that I'm going to add to it. Well, they have electric cameras, speed cameras. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's, yeah that's, a, that's a good question. Yeah, that's how this wouldn't add speed cameras um, because speed cameras, uh, the state has control over the uh, siding of them, and the DOT and the city uh, have to advocate for. Uh, more speed cameras and has in the past. Currently, it's not being expanded at this point. It's not being expanded currently. Um, what expanded left? Red, that was red light cameras. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Yes. I'm I just wonder, like, you know, will these, will these be calibrated though in our zone for those that do exist? I would believe so. I have to double check. Yeah, they should be. Yeah, they're good. I'm sorry. How? I mean. It's just signs that are going to be posted, and that's it. So signs will be posted um, at Canal Street, um, and then where the slow zone starts, and throughout the zone itself, the exact locations to be determined. Um, like we rely on NYPD to enforce speeding violations throughout the city. That that would still be the case here with the with the lowered speeds. So you guys are working with NYPD to. I mean, you would be. Yeah, I mean, we, we get like, complaints a lot um, from residents and, and we ask NYPD to increase enforcement based on what we hear from constituents so that I that wouldn't be different here. I mean, what about any traffic calming measures like bumps or anything like that? Um, I mean, yeah. we we study uh, we whenever we receive suggestions for speed for speed pumps, um, which are, are smaller than bumps because bumps will knock over a bike. Mm -hmm. um, we, whenever we receive suggestions for them, DOT is required to study all of the suggestions, whether they're from community boards, individuals, elected official offices, um, and we make determinations on whether they're able to be installed based on, you know, the speed of the vehicles that we observe, the utilities under the ground, and the geometry of the street. So this wouldn't really have an impact on the installation of speed humps and, and CV. Just, you know, wondering, like, if someone who's driving from the West Village suddenly like, oh, you're yeah. in slow zone yeah. now. <laughs> like, is it going to be like a flashing yeah. sign for slow zone? But yeah, that would be interesting thing at the, all the entrances up of bump. But this is a notice to say, hey, wake up. Slow zone, <laughs> that's what you say. Yeah, like little flashes. Yeah. Right. I don't know if that was handled. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to hurt. Oh, you yeah. Yeah, yeah, just lowering the speed limit to 20. I mean, we've we got to consider additional travel time. Like, 25 is already pretty slow. Now you want to make it 20? You I hate the best No, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't set it. <laughs> we don't need to get from point A to point B. And, and it's a lie. Yes, it's a lie. Yeah. Very slow. Uh, and increased travel time. Sorry, I know I said that. Um, has the MTA uh, given input on this because now we have in additional running time for their buses. Um, now, uh, the, the average running time for MTA buses in our district is about seven, seven miles per hour. But just to note also, this was a state legislature bit law, right? The governor signed it. So the, law. the governor signed it into law. Assembly member mm -hmm. Deborah Glick was a co sponsor. Congressman mm -hmm. Dan Goldman came out in support of the bill. Yep. This was also named after Sammy, who was a 12 year old who was killed by a reckless driver. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we all maybe know someone, maybe have a family member, maybe have a friend, a community member who's been killed, injured mm -hmm. by reckless drivers, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the intention here. And, and and that's why it took a very long time, but the Families for Safe Streets, right? Mm -hmm. All family members who have survivors or um, who have mm -hmm. loved ones who have either been injured or mm -hmm. killed by vehicular traffic, like that's where this bill came from. Overwhelming support. I think we really need to talk about slowing drivers down. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are the tragic and I don't want that to happen to anybody to get an accident. But that's where DOT and, and, and their their planners have to come. It's not just slowing traffic. We have to there's practical considerations to ensure that people can move in, in a reasonable amount of time and not just say we're going to narrow lane. We're going to reduce traffic. That's how we save lives. It's it's well, vision. It's not zero vision. It's vision zero. That, it's just it doesn't feel that we're being creative enough 
We're just taking the easy way out. Like, we'll just lower the speed. Did you talk about yourself? Hmm. Uh, I don't think. Right. You mentioned that the federal government needs to use with how quickly you move cars versus slowing them down or congesting them. They are moving away from that because there was a huge number of pedestrian injuries in there. I mean, and if you and if you look at the the, the yeah. data, it actually is pretty pretty staggering how it, the chances of you being killed in a crash after you get from little oh, point, yeah. yeah, particularly for seniors, just skyrockets after you all that. I happen to have some data <laughs> yeah, <it's> 30, <laughs> from the health action network. I'm sorry, health resources in action at 30 miles per hour. So let me put my readers on <laughs> at 30 miles per hour. The risk of death at 30 miles per hour is 19 percent, uh, three times greater, 19 percent, th three times greater than 20 miles per hour at 30, 20 miles per hour. The risk of death in a collision with a car, a pedestrian collision with a car, is six percent. Well, so, I mean, that was done when cars had lower noses. Yeah, look. Now that there are more SUVs and small trucks, which now make up 75 percent mm -hmm. of the vehicles sold in America, mm -hmm. there's a much higher kill rate and injury rate yeah. because they hit upper body and head. And mm -hmm. one more to your point, that's lower traffic. Uh, lower speed limits may actually improve traffic flow and reduce delays at intersections, making journey time the same or quicker in some cases. I just think that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I said my piece about that. So um, the other concern is what about e bikes? They're not going to, they go past cars all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I think they top 30. I, I got to tell you, they, they're really fast. So what about electric assist bikes and e-bikes? They're it's only class three. But they're, they're, they're fast. What's that mean, class three, by the way? Sorry. The big the class three. Oh, oh, that's what the oh, that's classes the, are. Okay. The, the heaviest city of over yeah, yeah. those. And rather than 25, they, they can rather than 20, they go up to 25 miles per hour, which would be faster than the slow zone. Yeah. Which is quite fast for, for a bike. For a bike, yeah, that is quite fast. People are trying to keep in mind some people on, on pedal bikes can also do it as well as technically if you're on uh, pedal assist <laughs> pedal assist pedal you yourself. Yeah, quickly you, know, you could, but the bulk of them are going to be those with class three e bikes and the state law that sets those speeds. Yep. Yeah, it's damage. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so I just wanted to address some of your points too, because uh, just because like the speed limit changes doesn't mean that the traffic obeys that speed limit. I've been a driver mm -hmm. before I got rid of my Lincoln. And um, I know that I don't go at 25 when the street's 25, I go at 30. Mm -hmm. you know? When the street is 30, I go at 35, 40. It's it's never the exact. So like lowering it to twenty is probably gonna have some type of effect, but people are still gonna go above the limit a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that the state still allows ten miles an hour over the speed limit is still considered legal. It, yeah, something there's not it's, right. Like, yeah, there's that not, is what they usually at least now that fifty percent increase over the speed limit in our zone. Yeah, but that is, that is legal if that makes you feel better. No. Um, I wanted to, in relation to this uh, conversation, I wanted to bring up that effective the first of this month, um, this law that we passed through the budget went into effect that strengthened the penalties for like obscured license plates. So that's like good. Yeah. This is Assembly Bill 88406C. Okay. I don't really know what it does because I have to pick it up myself. And I, uh, but I wanted to also touch on what Tammy had said about that study happening on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of details on that. I've been trying to ask the state DOT for details on that for a while. Um, and you know, they're they're gonna get back to me uh, with more. But mm -hmm. from what I do understand is that they they are going to be considering while they do that study, things that the community has brought up in the past. And I do remember reading a seat 
to Castellucci where they had asked for signal in the area of Route 9 and Canal Street, Spring Street, because there, there had been some accidents there where people got, got hurt. So a lot of the signaling, if that's part of the study, this is very relevant and very important to that because we're talking about signaling for speed. So Henry has a very good point that this needs to be the realistic way in terms of I just think that that's very common sense. In fact, speaking of that study, I just happened to look at the email about that that Zach had sent out. Mm -hmm. And that study had said they were going to start doing community engagement in August, which they didn't do. At yeah. some time. Yeah. So any information you can get about updating where the state DOT is on that would yeah. be helpful for their bill to do. Yeah, I agree. I'm, every week, every week, I'm, I'm sending an email about this. Yeah. <laughs> I've a press release on it. I don't know anything outside of what was shared with Zach. I don't know any more details than about the study. I wish I did, but so I will get back to you guys as soon as I have an answer. And I'm and I'm with and I'm with uh, Senator Kavanaugh's team too, uh, Dan Squires, who yeah, you know, so we're in the same traffic. Yes, to remind people the issues that have come up are things such as e bikes, especially those that are cargo bikes mm -hmm. riding on West Street. Uh, the crossing distances and time are really too fast for the elderly, especially. Uh, and those bike conflicts at the other side can slow some people down as well. There are a number of issues to be looked at. So I hope it's not just speed. Mm -hmm. But in fact, speed is a problem. And I know throughout our backyard, there have been multiple complaints. Since you ran the Holland Tunnel. Here. Hey, Brad. Um, I'm in support of this because I like pedestrians. But the, my mm -hmm. only um, kind of question to it is like, with you slowing down uh, traffic, essentially, or slowing down cars, like, will that worsen um, environmental impact? But in most places, it doesn't. I know that, I know that uses an argument, so I've read a lot of articles recently about that and saying it really doesn't. They're moving from point A to B. Mm -hmm. They're not being stopped in traffic, which is when it becomes more of a pollution mm -hmm. problem. Stop and go. Yeah. Well, mostly stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Sounds like we. Yeah, sounds like a positive yeah I think so. Yeah. yeah. We're in support of it. Are there any things we, any conditions we want to I haven't heard anything so far. But no. Other than what Tammy yeah, had only, the, only the condition that the studies that are currently in place. And those will be aware as. Yeah. Right. Uh, we need to take right. into account in their statistics. I mean, there are two more supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to enforce it, enforce it, especially with the e bikes. Uh, yep. Yeah. Maybe may be saying something about trying to put the e-bikes into compliance, but the other speed limit And that, as you said, it may not be DOT, but at least we could put it out there as a request. I think one of the problems is going to be how do we teach the people with the e-bikes that you should ask, what is their speed? Is that the only problem? That's true. Mm -hmm. ah, if everybody, anybody has one of the Fitbits or, or anything like that, they have speedometers. These are people who are complaining that they can't afford their battery. Yeah. So oh, I think they should be in the roadway. Yeah, and they're allowed well, to. They are in the roadway, but the fact is, who's going to train them for 20 months that they hit 20 miles per hour? Because they know they're speeding. Mm -hmm. That's it's a good speeding. point. Yeah. I would look so. at some of the work that kind of um, so we can burn borders just now. Um, this was, I do recall him having some type of bill that would register mopeds past mm -hmm. the budget. I don't know if it had passed both houses and then. The moped education certainly did. <laughs> they were <laughs> moped. We had a resolution on that one. Which paid attention to moped, but we're really talking about like e bikes here, not motor vehicles. Mm -hmm. So, did we call to question? Well, and, and the other condition that I suggested put in that some of the school streets, which can be 20 miles per hour, now that everything's 20 miles per hour, can still be allowed to be considered. For the 10 mile per hour 
load on their blocks. Yeah, I've had that link. Where they have them and, and point out a couple of schools that have Titus and Hawthorne, especially. There are special special needs children that have been known mm -hmm. to run off into the traffic, mm -hmm. even though they're being supervised by personnel. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Talking to one at Woolworth, did they? Mm -hmm. uh, no, one's on John Street, and the other one actually might be mm -hmm. Woolworth. The, the so the one we want to ask for it to go down to Ten House now in the vicinity of a school. Well, that it be possible, <clears throat> an option. <clears throat> we, uh, well, it's. I don't know if it's explicitly for school streets. It is for the shared streets and for the select open streets. So if you want to include that in the resolution, um, I can also check if, if that's afforded for um, the school streets. I mean, because like, you know, in the suburbs, they have that where it's like school zone and it's blinking like, yeah. and so that's the idea. School zone, which of course is a lot of schools. So, yeah. But, you know, depending on what school video you but if at least an option is available yeah. within our flow within our flow zone to have that to that point around schools or school streets you can you know we also request speed hops or your treatment oh um, sorry um yes yeah, certainly uh, a separate issue here from the flow zone you're correct but if you have specific right but, yeah we can certainly ask that specific <laughs> school but as far as the other one is more a speed limit issue, we no, I brought it up. Okay. So I believe we have a motion pending. And then call the question. Second it. See? Second it. Okay. So, I mean, I, we have the basic wording. You're good with it, right? I mean, I think um, we've got, it's positive. We like it. We have some conditions. Oh. Everyone's assumed a yes. Unless he votes no. One. Uh, Recusal, abstention, then everyone else would be yes, and it passes. See who's here. Yeah. Who looks at I? Yes, the black one. That letter that was referred to at the, at the slideshow mm -hmm. at the beginning. Um, who did that letter go? Like, that was, did it come to the? Those from DOT to yes. the impacted community boards. Did they write? Did it was only sent to the community boards. Okay. You, to, oh, you, yeah, we were asking, you want one? Next up. Yeah. We'll yep. Thank you so much. This was Thank really you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you both for coming. Thank you for coming. Take care. Yeah, well, I don't normally come to. You no, I know. Usually, see Tevin. Yes, exactly. But this is uh, the first time in a very long time I've been to a community board meeting, and this is awesome. This was an awesome one. Thank Say bye to Tevin. Yeah. Uh, you need him. You need John. Oh, he just sent an email saying that they have uh, COVID tests available. So if anyone's interested, oh, they have them. How you get them? Since he just sent an email with our team talking about. Yeah, I mean, we're, I mean, we're going to, but I'm not chasing them. Well, if anyone's interested, those are the people to contact. Thanks. Next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. And I'd like to go fairly quickly on this because I know if you look at the past, we haven't been terribly productive in getting anything that we want done. <laughs> you always keep asking, right? <laughs> well, no. Well, or you think no? I was talking to the TV one office. TV one resolutions at the last ditch meeting. I collected those to see which ones had an ask that might have a budgetary consequence. Asking about safer request for this purpose. As far as the developing historic streetscape design guideline, it was actually in last year's budget, and I'll ask that it be continued. Mm -hmm. We have, then there were a whole bunch of things that were eye opening when I reviewed last year's budget. Uh, the daylighting corners to improve street safety for all users. Again, if we're going to ask for any of these things, the suggestion that came from Zach, and I think he's right. Would be to name actual locations. Mm. So if you have anything you're thinking of, 
by all means, go check them out and send them to me in an email, and I'll start to collect them for you and then enter them. As far as requesting crosswalk at PS 150, somewhat of a problem. I mean, we can certainly do that and ask that if people agree that should be done. The new, yeah, the new 150. We need something there. That place is a mess. Yeah. Right. So I will go back to the resolutions. If people agree, go to the resolution request and enter them as budgetary requests. Uh, because the revocable consent, the anchor bolt, that did have the one proviso where it asked to uh, for the creation and make public a plan for safe and accessible mobility. So if you want to add the mobility plan to be developed. Yeah. Okay, and a request in New York City ferry route to LaGuardia Airport and to go to the EDC. Okay, so that's really all there is, and I'll ask for those, and don't ask like you've never seen them before, because I've mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yes, that makes sense. Is, is daylighting a budget thing? Because it's, it's already happened. Well, I'm going to go to some of the problems. I'm going to go to the next one, and I had lots of eye openers when I read the budget and the responses. Some of the things I came up with, and you, while well, reading it, I was very disheartened while I was reading it, so mm -hmm. don't take it too seriously. But when looking at fiscal year 2025, which is the current one, responses need to be, and we need to have a better understanding in yeah, the community board, or at least me. Many of them this time, and I've never seen it before, were the parts. Yeah, that's the first so, time I was going to ask that question too. I have too. no idea. I searched it and yeah. I couldn't find it. Um, parts is DOT's internal case tracking system. So that means if you submitted a request and you received a response back, um, that said like arts or receipt arts. Um, you should have also received like a DOT case number um, because the request you made wasn't an expense or capital request. It was something that you know we're able to do in our our regular day to day work. Um, so I, you know, for example, someone may have requested a speed hump or or signage or some something like that. So in other words, it's not a capital item. It should have been an expense item. No, it's not. No, no, not an expense item. That's something you could. Oh, okay. So it's just the regular operation. Yep. So we don't need to put it in those. Yeah. So with daylighting, I would assume falls in that category two. Or ask if it would fall in that category two. Daylighting would, yeah, fall in that category as well. No, you're correct. It doesn't belong in the budget. That was my question. So but where, where, where we that it, but we we do have resolutions that ask for it in other places. Yes, we can use other mechanisms. This is the first time in 2025 budget. Then I saw the response from the DOT saying, this is not part of the, this is arts, not the district budgeting process. Right. So I knew it was a new thing for me to learn because I've never seen it before in past budgets. And that we know. Mm -hmm. And hence, yeah, some of these things, because in fact, I'll let you know, to show the surprise of surprises. You know how many roads we have, cobblestone streets we have where we request to be refinished? I think that counted eight. That's the response we got to all of them. Yes, I looked at that as well. So that was my question. So the, no, it's not just signs or things that are relatively inexpensive with paint. It's things like Cobblestone Street. Right. It's Northmore. It's Franklin. It's Vestry. Harrison. It's Harrison. It's Dwayne Street, which actually should be removed from that. It's Staple Street. Um, J Street. J Street has already been done. It's it's not requested. Anyway, but can we get an inventory of things that have those cases, case numbers assigned to them if they from, exist from the request made last year? Yeah. The ones that say arts, is there, can we do a search somehow and get tracking numbers for those so we know what the status is? Um, I can go back and see if, I, if we can share those with you. And then my question is, if, if, do you need a copy of the district by or do you have access to that to be able to find them? I, we should have a copy of it. Um, and don't have that, that and send you a okay. district budget. Because my question is, you said that these the things that fall under your um, jurisdiction that would not be budget, but would be in the arts system, by putting it here in this and it's saying it goes to the arts process, not the budget, does that mean we flagged it for you or it means it's just a black hole? It means you flagged it for us. So uh, for the cobblestones repairs, what likely um, they were and they would have been entered into the system and then um, shared with our colleagues who do the cobblestone repairs every year. And as we probably shared in the past, EOT has a really limited budget and yeah. time, frame, time frame for cobblestone repairs every year. 
Um, so we have to prioritize um, the ones that are, you know, need the attention the most and, and versus the resources we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is taken away from Kate because this goes back to our CB1 office. I know that Clary has brought up in the past, they would like to prioritize how to live prioritize. out of South Street. So there needs to be some kind of mechanism. I've been asking for years for a group of members or someone go through and clean up the budget. Mm. There are items that have already been funded, finished. There are ones that we've already asked to be taken out because they're obsolete at some point. There are those that, like this with the art study, that really need to be followed through and then dropped off the budget. Right. That's done again next year. Right. Uh, and as far as the art pro process, we need to be able to look at the, or consider looking at the priorities that the neighborhood has set. Right. And decide how to move forward with those. So, so I think we need to rethink this whole process as a community board. May I suggest that we invite the arts team come and present to us all of the things that they have on their docket and and tell let them tell us like what their process is, what their budget is, how they go about these things. And we start a dialogue like we have with Patrick, you know, like we should be engaging with the agencies to to solve problems. That's so a great idea. Maybe they could come in and, and tell us a little bit about the process, how they make those choices. And if we know they have limited budgets and we say, you know what, we think that this street is a particular hazard, take those limited budget dollars and put them here, you know, then at least we can get one done mm -hmm. and not have seven on a, a budget that's not ever going to move. So is that the process? Mm -hmm. How do they interact with the Manhattan Borough office? Yeah. So my, my only comment to that is that uh, DOT's units were, so that's the arts, like when you make a 311 complaint or when you make a complaint through the DOT website, like arts is just a format like that the DOT folks internally, we, you know, used to view those complaints and to kind of communicate about them internally. So I think more what you, you might be asking for is um, if you could have the, the people who deal specifically with cobblestones to come to a meeting. I don't, I don't know if that would be possible. Typically, um, you know, uh, that's what our office, the Manhattan Borough Commissioner's Office is for. We, we tend to liaise between the public rather than having um, all the different offices out and about. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it could be cobblestones or as an example, or street lighting. Or, or bikes, um, and the, and kind of the list goes on and on the different um, the different units. So it, it would be more helpful to have the the topic or or the specific issue that you want more information on, and you kind of go from there. Okay, well that makes sense. So you you're already here then. You already <laughs> have what we need. Yay! <laughs> so then we just need to organize a discussion around particular topics when they come back from the budget process, so that we can shepherd them along in some way with you. And I think we we offered this last year, but weren't able to get on the on the calendar. Um, we were we could I can check if it's possible to have um, an earlier conversation before you have to submit um, your budget requests. Uh, and if, if we can go through them, I can, I can check if that's something that we can do. Yeah, no, that'd be very helpful. And again, People think about it. How be July? The August one vacation. September is right before spring. No, it should be like in. Let's be proactive. Why not schedule these conversations for March and April so we have time to think about them and prioritize them, and then make a compelling case for what we want to get done. I will look at the budget. And I would look at the schedule. I can tell you, April is a heavy takeover month. Some people are getting ready for our questions. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Budget to look at and talk to Kate to find out kind of where their budget, where their heavy times are. There's so one more. There's one more category I think that is similar to this, which is all of the. Um, it comes up with parks that aren't parks. We think of the, you know they're they're actually green streets, mm -hmm. so it's like this jurisdictional question about, um, you know, Barnett Newman. Square, but it's actually a DOT triangle. So, well, Gotham Park, which is really the Gotham option. Park, you know, like, I mean, there are a lot, Finn Square. Like, if anybody asked me about prioritization of little park projects, it would not be Dwayne Park, it would be Finn Square. And the sidewalks are going like this, 
They're buckling with tree roots, they're tripping hazards, and there have been numerous complaints to 311, um, but nothing. I, I, I fear it's another one of those things where there are eight projects vying for limited dollars, and it's unclear about what the prioritization process is and whether or not that's a capital project, an expense item, or you know, whether it's DOT or parks, you know, there's just a lot of questions and we have probably six or seven of those in the CB1 budget as well that lack that kind of clarity. Why don't you give me a list of some of the areas you're interested in? But then we can look at them if they are DOT, we can look at you want to deal with them in committee. The parks can certainly take them and often they like to take them. But in reality, if you're talking about sidewalks, you know, you get maybe more expedient to just deal with it in this committee. And I'm sure we can get lots of interested people to be willing to present with some slides and think what the problem is and just a resolution to deal with it. And we don't question maybe the most effective way to do it. Yeah, right, right. It's just that those things that are DOT property or whatever, they're not within the parks department. All the budget requests go to parks, and parks says there's insufficient resources. But it's, it's, Parks is supposed to maintain the greenery, but the actual space is DOT. So I think, the, anyway, it's, it's just another one of those things where I think our budget process is inefficient and our requests are inefficient because they're going to the wrong agencies and we're mm -hmm. not getting anything done. That's what I still suggest. We really need to have a small team of people who work. They're also get really into the budget to go through it and really clean out some of those issues because it's stated in the responses. You're writing to the wrong group. Right. And we do it again the next year and the next year. I mean, some of these are straightforward right. fixing. And when they ask community board members to add things to the process, which yeah. I'm not supposed to, but what I find is I can't change things from the past. I can't delete things that I know are wrong from the past. So fixing it is important. And somebody who wants to add something, there's got to be a way of Reconciling that with what already exists and might conflict with it, might duplicate it, might do right. all kinds of things. And that's very frustrating and it has to do with it's our system. It's a problem. It's as you can see it's cobblestones as for the arts. Cobblestone streets you came with crosswalks for PS89. It came up for speed cameras around Hudson and Lake Street. It came up on multiple kinds of things, not just. So we need to do something about that. And we and also uh those that are just items that are Paul, the borough commissioner's office, that's fine and good, but is anybody doing it? Is anybody tasked with doing it? Right. Or can we identify some people who will actually follow through and find out what they're thinking before we submit the next budget? Is that something that every committee should be doing for the things that they're putting forth into the district budget? Because it wasn't just ours and DOT that came up with these responses. And we don't have just DOT, we have EDC and other committees, other agencies that we make requests to. Yeah, those are really good points, Betty. Uh, so, yeah, I feel I'm playing. Sorry, this is a long frustration, it has nothing to do with you. Way predates you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, from now on, it'll be your home. But <laughs> there's no real way to <laughs> or modify them from previous years, which is why there's so weird duplication. Such as now, let's pick on another group. We knew we keep reading in the press that a plus pool is going to be put up in CB3 territory. There are three or four entries in our budget for pools. Yeah. On the West Coast, on the East River. I bet we don't do anything about them this year, and they're still in there. We still get the weird response. But anyway. Okay, so the plus pools are not in the budget. Well, they are in the budget all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, but are they supposed to be? You want to remove them now because it's so the done. duplication was what I asked in the past. Let's get rid of the duplication. Right. Uh, now, is it worth even entering at all when we know that the city's proclaimed where it's going to go? And it's not mm -hmm. here. And it's not here. Okay. Now I understand. Uh, and how are the priorities determined? I never knew. Yeah. Maybe somebody knows, but not me, but I don't know. Uh, should there be a panel of members that work on the budget? Yes. Uh, should there be committee members' roles in the district budgeting process? Mm -hmm. Now, what should the committee members' roles be? For instance, should we be following up on these parts requests? Should we be following up on commissioners? Kind of cleaning up the past as we move forward. Not just suggesting things and then 
I want people to think about that because some of these aren't very easy answers if they're new to you. But look at the budget and you'll get a real good clue of what I'm talking about. Because the borough that you have an answer to it, we keep getting it from OMB to limit the number of expense and the number of capital requests, and we will exceed it every year. Yes, we uh, think we're triple the recommendation. Oh, oh yes. So, Wait, so then what happens then? What? What happens if we triple the recommendations? What? Generally, I, I, I don't know specifically, okay. but I, you know, I think you can kind of get an idea if you're, if you're, if you're used to, you know, if you're, if you have 50 community boards and, mm, yeah, yeah. you know, you get a giant number from one of them, <laughs> how, how do you deal with it if you're full of requests? Yeah. Well, especially if there's a you lot know, of strong narrowing it is. I think could be a very effective strategy. If they don't belong there, that's a good get rid of the old ones. Right. They might not be so well. You do a new one, you have to clean them up. Yeah. Maybe duplicates get rid of those that are yeah. already done and you don't need them anymore. But the other issue, and Zach, you can address this. I'm so glad to hear this from Zach is being considered. It is so weird to have to rank something for parks against something from DOT, against something from the DOE. And you commented that maybe they'll change it. Maybe we should ask the OMB change it to ranking within an agency for requests. Yes. Because it's so weird to do it across agencies. Yeah, district managers were discussing that with them uh, late spring. Mm -hmm. um, it was something they were looking at. I don't know if they fell on something yet, uh, but I should know uh, soon. I agree. I think that would. I, I mean, I've only only seen this process uh, a, a tiny bit, but I could see how that would be uh, make things a lot easier um, for both the agency and for the board to you know, st strategically rank stuff. Right, because then the committees could have a bigger input because we would be focused only on our own. I don't know, so, yeah, that makes sense. Our committees don't work against committees who have very different needs assessments. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will change in the future. Shouldn't we make a request to our executive committee to create like four sort of district wide priorities? You know, just a manageable number each year, achievable goals. It sounds very Pollyanna, but I'll go with it anyway. You know, like just four achievable goals. Good idea. And well, then everybody on the board can be advocating for the same thing all the time until they're done. Yeah. Right. Well, and starting the whole process because it's broken. Absolutely. So, okay. We will not be a resolution, but I'll have to think for you to think about because it's going to come next month. We'll yeah. actually vote. We have and to then everybody get this and they say, here it is, vote on it. And you'll say, I had no say on the priority. No say on really what's included. Well, there's a we... whole bunch in the budget that I don't even agree with because it's done with. I've been asking that question since 2020 when I first started listening in on these calls. And I know you know because Betty had to suffer through them with me. But um, the, the idea that prioritization isn't done at least at the committee level like we should be able to tell the executive or Zach or whoever that, you know, as a transportation committee, this is the important. budget. Yeah. These are our top three. Yeah. yeah. Or these are our top two, whatever the number is. Like except our experience is. Well, but, well, but, but let's say we did since the first year. But we're gonna start, we're gonna forge a new path, right? Yeah. So why not just model the behavior that it, we want everybody else to follow? And the transportation committee has looked at its budget of all the things that went to do all the requests that we've made and here are our top four transportation committee priorities and we'd like to see them reflected in the budget that way do you want to wait until next month to do it which can be done very really quickly well, we can look at what's been entered to the dot to go in the budget and then work with that yeah for you to say let's pick the top four there is a spreadsheet way. version yeah, back in the day yeah. where we could sort and filter by agency. Yeah, get that. Well, if we could share, I, it's probably a Google Doc kind of a thing. I yeah, think I, Frank. I, I put together, um, with the help of our intern from Pace, uh, a 
a new version of that. Um, I can get that out to you. Sorry, it's my first first day back from vacation. No, I'll work uh, that. Well, that sounds good. We need to be had to rent. So, why don't you give us a couple of weeks? Is there a proper ready for people to enter ideas into the new budget? Uh, enter ideas in the past, that's what's been done, correct? It was a late day to go into it. I think it's better if we don't mess with this. I agree with you. I think because it became chaotic, and then I think all the prioritization conversations got lost. Exactly. I think it's better if you give us all our own copy, not your Google Doc. Let us filter it the way we want and have us come back as we would in any board meeting or committee, you know, group meeting and collaborate and say, okay, this is how I sorted it. And maybe we'll find that we're all in alignment on Don't some things. The new ones. But and then add this year's red those. Yes. Should really be in the mix. Otherwise, what are you ranking? You're ranking something that's going to be obsolete as soon as we add new well, items. Well, we have the list that you from this year's resolutions that you right but well, that, let me just enter that that's, well, yes yeah put that first yeah yes. oh yeah 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 enter yeah. that in and then we can one play the stats, so we enter the things and then mix it and let people so we can do ranking it next month I mean, what do people think of that idea is it too Pollyanna? am i too naive that this is a process no that we can do it certainly in this group we can i don't know if we can get it to the committee not just throw things out exactly yeah. something let's get stuff yeah. done yeah. Yeah. Right. Less less. So, yeah last year suggesting something because something they moved with and they it, ignored and i so, think maybe go targeting only four as a priority may be a better solution and it works and when you said to be cut, I mean, anything that's been denied to come off the list, right? Or been addressed? That's not exactly true because the cobblestone streets have been denied for over 10 years. Right. But they shouldn't be there, apparently. Yeah, because they well, don't belong. Right? Yeah, so now we know they don't believe there, so they should go. Well, we need to get permission from Tammy and Zach that that's the way the community board's moving. Well, we should talk about Maybe that's the problem. Zach. Well, Zach, 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 Zach is not the I mean, I know you, you know, I mean, you know, the committees, the committees handle, you know, the budget requests for their committee. So you, you make that recommendation and, and then we can do it for ourselves. So right. right. we can certainly do what Carrie suggested for ourselves. But as far as winnowing out the stuff that we really don't want on, my success has been zero in the past. Even in our own stuff. Yes. Well, we should be able to do that. We should we should put that up, and we should. I would support you. So in the Zach, I support it. Who exactly selects what's on it and what's projected? Well, if nobody knows, it's district yeah. leaders did it, but I maybe I'm wrong. Well, I thought the district leaders did it, but I don't know. I don't know because none of us are part of the process. No, so nobody knows. And I don't know why I thought that. So, Somehow it felt like it was Lucian did this. <laughs> Our suggestion and recommendations could be we want these four items in there, nothing else. Do it. Get the top four. And if there are any other really high contenders, yeah, maybe. Because everyone's not going to agree on exactly the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, one or two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Way to move forward, Jessica. Next. That's great. That's a good idea. Good idea. Good idea. Press your bus stop on West Street. This, I wanted to just introduce to get some feedback from you. Why well, just introduced it? will be finished in October. CB2 is putting this forward and has asked us to participate. The committee did pass the resolution CB2. July 30, CB2 on July 31st. They have not taken it to full board yet. So they haven't been able to disseminate any of it, which is why mm -hmm. I have nothing I can act on, which is why there's nothing you can act on. So that has why it's going into October to see how we want to deal with theirs. We merely want to accept theirs. We want to write one that co-ops a lot of theirs, but adds some of our own issues. 
we can deal with that next month. So right now there are no buses unless or they're, or they're not down here. No. The Thank M20 you. or whatever it is that comes from Battery Park to Harrison. But it doesn't snap a little one, that little right. stretch. There are buses in the way. There are, there are only, only in CB4, not in CB2 yeah. and not in CB1. Okay. There's no stops. No. Like, at like, I don't know what kind of bus it is, which I don't take it, but like the intersection of like North Moore, I think, and West, where you cross to get to the that's not it. There's a bus that stops right there. But there's a not on North Moore. Yeah, nothing on West Street. But I guess it is. No, they're not saying it's on West Street. It stops on West. Yeah. Right, but they're asking for if people who want to go from one place in uh, Pennsylvania Park to another really can't traverse the length of West Street. Which means stopping on West Street, making they, new stops. Yeah. They originally Stop said they want them to service as the corridor from Eighth Street westward to the to. Got it. And so it came up with alternatives, ferry bus, uh, and focus on let's focus on the bus because everyone seems to agree there are many, there are multiple buses, not many. There, there's more than one bus in CB2 that goes towards West Street, but they're still complaining that there's really no way so to get up, up, up and south. And the seniors and disabled are their biggest targets. But let's see what CB1 says. Uh, they, CB2. They voted unanimously in favor of resolution, so I do know there is one out there. Uh, they are mostly concerned about children and seniors. Mm -hmm. They are concerned about the Hudson River waterfront not being best utilized by the people who live in the area, as well as people communicating. Uh, Tammy brought it up to me first, and again, she is chair or one of the co-chairs of the Hudson River Park Trust, Trust Advisory Council. So I have approached her about getting a resolution for it, but they are complaining. They can't really get to different locations within the park very convenient, not easily at all. And so with this, you might not have an answer for this, but is the question and answer like, where, what side of the street would it be on? Because like what I'm, what I'm thinking right now is like the northbound side, I'm pretty sure, and I'll take a picture next time I walk out over that way, has a bus stop or two, but like I can't imagine many places from the southbound. Yeah, I don't think of any southbound that are more. That is a thing. That's a little bit, but the MTA the admits they don't service it. Yeah, there's none. Yeah, maybe there's not an MTA bus because I don't recall any bus. Stop. So, you know, what they talk about. Maybe it drives on it to get someplace. Yeah, but there's there's only the, the only one I'm aware of is the one that comes from Battery Park City, comes up the west side to Harrison Street and makes it right. And then it comes, yeah, because it comes and around and goes east. That's in from there. Really, there's nothing here. The M20. The M20. Yeah. M20. And that was one of Tammy's comments, is because she makes the trip so often, there's really no way for her to get to where she needs to get within the park or even to the park from where she lives in Barry Park City. No, it's a bike ride or walking. That's it. <laughs> right. And she said that there are a number of people that this just is not a suitable transportation. And it's crazy because it's a wonderful resource not be that easy to get to and there are things like concerts at little uh little west whatever little, little, little island, 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 island where you have crowds coming and going from there why isn't there bus service to move people when they have these events well it comes to it goes up hudson street so i mean it's one block in mm -hmm. what it's two blocks two blocks it's in. eight nice no it's it's three blocks that's four it's it's far when you get up to the middle island. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's eighth, eighth or ninth. If it's in the eighth, that's very far. You've got to go to 12 and yeah, beyond. It's, it's not, but if you look at what the conversational is for CB2, they did pass on what they did. Do they have an idea of stops? The MTA spoke with Melissa Farley, so at least now that you know who they communicated with, and she's asked for comments and letters of support so she can pass it on to their planning committee. So we're going to be looking at that. Who can we get to? The response has been positive from the MTA. They recognize there is a gap that can and should be filled. So they are receptive, but they also warned that the, uh, they're doing redesigns in Queens and Brooklyn and don't have a timeline yet to Manhattan. However, CB2 is moving forward now and has asked CB1 to move with them. So one thing to make a note of, if you're willing, um, that's that state DOT traffic study, you know, talking about rejiggering the whole thing. That would be something to consider to have the have the bus routes put into that. Yeah. Because you're gonna need stops. And and 
Maybe the other way around, but like I said, the MTA is admitting they don't have a time frame yet. Okay, so this first, but we can we can like talk we can talk about it and say think as you're planning this. Yeah, no, there, let me mention this as we're at. Yeah, yeah. To yes, think about yes. it because we're, that's going on by the state DOT, the MTA should be aware of it. I wondered for budget reasons, they're like removing bus routes and stuff. Not necessarily Manhattan, but I. So my question is leading to what's the feasibility of this actually happening? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they're restructuring things, well. Well, are that's this is not my area, but I can tell you um, they, they always review it every 10, I don't know what the number of years, but they reevaluate based on, on changing um, housing and business patterns. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, yes, you're right. They had they've been looking at removing stops um, because just so that the buses can, can have shorter run times when possible. That's where they meet resistance with with removing bus stops. But I mean, I'd like to research this. <laughs> This is interesting. I, I think it's great that we would have CD1 advocating so that it's not just us. And if there's an existing bus that maybe we can just have extended. Yeah. That, that's, that's I don't think there is one, but if they get it. That's why I was interested in seeing the wording of the CD2. Yeah. Exactly what they're asking for. Do you think they're going to have it by September? You don't know. You know, it's going to be voted on this month. Oh, okay. So, so the yeah. Passed by committee at the end of July. And they didn't. They're on a different calendar. August, they were off. Their committee meetings are like, Full board is like in the middle of the month. They go middle of the month to middle of the uh, month. Okay. And that's why very soon they have full board revoting. So, and then they'll release so we can talk about the draft. draft. Okay. And when I get it, I will release the draft to everybody so you can see CD2's resolution. That's great. And, it's passed. and maybe to your point, like, I mean, they are trying to change, like, the pedestrian, not pedestrian, but like the red, you know, we're increasing residences down here. So they're trying to, so there is change coming through the neighborhood. That, that makes sense, yeah. And some yards, which wasn't really what wasn't there, and that's another thing. Yeah, yeah. For all the peers, uh, all right. the peers. Yeah. Uh, so there have been massive changes. Battery Park City wasn't much the last time no. they considered either. No, so there true. are a lot of things along that route that have been considered. That makes sense. Chelsea Piers, all you got all right. of it. Well, all yeah. the residential growth and yeah. right back up. Yeah. So, I have a Just I, I did look there. There is a bus stop. You're right on, on North Moore and West Street, but it's it's the express buses that help. Mm. Oh, the Lexus Island, Queens, Manhattan Community College along. Yeah, we have Stuyvesant High School along there, mm. and I think we can point out That's those true. things that mm. are destination yeah. that should be attracting people from outside our immediate neighborhood. Correct. I have a question. But if we get any support from Community College, let me know because that would be very very helpful. Um, have them being on board. And like I said, I will release soon as I get the resolution, which would have more answers mm -hmm. to your administration, which I'm sure they want to know. A city bike, the call from City Bike. I was reading an article about well, it. First, let's just finish this. Up. Oh, okay. Sorry. If you have the next one, uh, support that was collected by CB2. This is just to give you some ideas because, again, the MT was asking for support. Mm -hmm. They got a letter from CB4, which does have pretty good service along those streets. Um, the Downtown United Soccer Club, the Greenwich Village Little League, Little Island itself. So mm -hmm. oh, I think I put down some of the things next. Yeah, who can help us? What about, I was thinking the Downtown Boathouse, which is Pier 26, uh, Downtown Little League, mm -hmm. which is a separate one. The Hudson River Park Advisory Council resolution, which Tammy has promised me she'll get done. The Tribeca North Neighborhood Association may or may not be willing. I think there's also one at, uh, if we can get the community college, that'd be great. But I think there's also another association by Independence Plaza, which surprised me when I heard the name of another Tribeca Neighborhood Association. I didn't know they even existed. There's the one fighting the tower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. They're, they're just focused on that. If they're, I, say, I can ask him. If they're focused more broadly, it would be great. Would they be considered? Would they be interested in the bus service? Because we'll know more. Well, the tenants association uh, would have a say. Bus. Yeah, right. You would know. Do you know them? No, I don't know them. But with having seniors as well, that it's to not have to travel so far to be able to get bus. Do you do you want to ask like city winery? Uh, there's the touch Chelsea say. Piers. Was that not us? Well, it's Hudson, Hudson River Park is the city, land city winery. City winery. Hudson River Park is the landlord for city winery. Yeah, that's okay. But city winery could pop in, you know, could make it make it. And then Chelsea Pierce is out of our jurisdiction. Did you 
Yeah, so if you can think of anything else you want, you know, we'll. I don't know if you guys have a like one. With me? Yeah, it was in us. Yeah, they might care. Yeah, that's not really awesome. Yes, yeah. literally. Sorry, yeah. my desk. Little desk was on there. Which one? Dusk downtown. Oh, so. dusk. Yeah, dusk. Uh, dusk is a different one. Dusk is a private league. Yeah, that's true. Dusk and downtown. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm saying the different different groups. I don't do you know them. Fine, right? And then there's whoever the boat restaurant is. City Vineyard. City Vineyard. And city City Winery. Like, oh, oh, okay. yeah. The same city. thing, but then like the boat people as well. Oh, oh, oh I'm Grand Banks. Banks. Yeah, the oh, Grand, Grand Banks. Banks. Yes. That's a good call. Contact, by all means, do approach and give this and the information. Manhattan Youth, right? Manhattan Youth, yeah, like a Bob Tellman. I think it would be nice. Manhattan Youth could help. Okay. Anyway, if you have any ideas, and we'll really be talking about this for the resolution next month. I okay. think actually that's the end of it. So, anyway. Yeah. Oh, news and updates are really only two updates. So, you know what happens to things we've done in the past. Uh, so the street improvement project from Park Row has started. It started last month. It started at work in Oliver Street. Just to go to the next one. I think we'll take to the overall map to remind you of where the project is, mm -hmm. kind of what they're doing. But it has started and hopefully we'll get information. Project director has been sending me emails when they've started things. Hopefully if that keeps up. Keep track of these various changes will be occurring. Street improvement plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. meant to be like sort of temporary while the bigger improvements are put in. So. It's not meant to be temporary, but it is the shorter term shorter fund. Term. Yeah. Army so. fund. And yes, things like the uh the fencing will come down as they had the sidewalks is going to be a lot more space. It'll be the openness should be very sorry. No, I'm not that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Excuse those forever. Kate. Any other one? Yes. Sorry. Sure. So, Kate, does uh, the DOT plan have a date to open Park Road? To, I know we're supposed to test it to see how, how the traffic flows. So, we're currently conducting a traffic study that um, is part of the larger Chinatown connections and Kim Lao Square. Um, redesign that we've proposed, um, partially funded through the state's DRI. Um, we expect that the traffic study will be complete at the beginning of next year. And until then, um, you know, for now, we're not uh, publicly announcing whether or not Park Row is going to be open to close because any any changes to private vehicular access um, is going to be informed by those results. Mm -hmm. And when you, uh, so from the early next early next year, this uh, this is a, a separate, um, you know, because the the city received funding from the state to make improvements to Park Row, but we were, you know, we we're not able to determine if it should be opened yet. To, um, the, so these are the interim improvements that we're doing based on outreach. That was, uh, you know, we did virtual and in-person outreach uh, and people were talking about the concerns about the pinch point. If you're a pedestrian, the bike, is, uh, bike and ped conflicts. Um, and just general like kind of confusion navigating. So that's this this is pretty separate from from the larger conversation. Mm -hmm. of this I, I yeah. they said the DOT team that presented it said this does not require or exclude yep. private that's vehicle. Correct. It's it is completely separate. That's it was designed correct. to be separate. But then Kate, yeah. I mean <laughs> as DOT representative, yeah. how can they do a, a traffic study if they don't test the flow of open park road to private vehicles. So I'm I'm not a traffic engineer, um, but the modeling is based off of they're able to predict what the usage would be if it is open based on previous um, based on previous data and you know what the traffic in the larger area is. So they, they use that to model the, the different scenarios. I'm concerned. They already have a, uh, a know what they want to do. That's why they're not opening it up. But thank you for your yeah. response. Let's not open the park road. That started. And the other thing to mention next is really pretty quick. And it's separate from Greenway. So, but anyway, 
uh, the federal judges, they're constantly coming in with disability issues. And they have mandated that all new New York cities have to be accessible to wheelchairs. Which is kind of interesting because with Greenway, remember they could be either electric or they could be vegetable. This is taxis, not for hire vehicles other than taxis. But nevertheless, yes. there, there are from the corridors and there will be more taxis that are wheelchair accessible. Does that mostly just mean that all the future taxis are going to be like vans? If they will, all future will be accessible. They don't always have to be vans. In fact, I hate vans, but nevertheless, there, there, are, there, are, yeah, there are other ways of doing it. London conquered this years ago, but it, it gets down to what taxi drivers want, and there are a lot of metrics around mm -hmm. what they think is more cost effective and, and attractive to them. So we'll find out. But nevertheless, that's really all there is. And do I have the book? Yes. You have some I did have a question about City Bank. Is that a budget item to say that we think the city or, or somebody should help subsidize it because it's becoming too expensive? That could be a future issue, and I have been collecting stuff on that. Okay. However, I can also tell you that the mayor has said, least very recently, that it is a conversation, city subsidy, when the next phase of expansion occurs in the black and brown yeah. need area. So I can tell you this. The city is not going to be very receptive because he very recently made this. Just said that. Okay. Nevertheless, I think it's worth revisiting, but keep that in mind as we move forward with it. Yes. Makes sense. Okay. Any motions? Yes. End the meeting. Second. Second. Yeah. Second. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. No, I'm supposed to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. <laughs> all along. Oh, God.